Hey there people, it's Blake Von Karma here. So, I got I got linked a video uh, from somebody who, uh, in my Discord server, um, called the, the Problem with Smash Ultimate DLC by Nintendo Land. I watched a bit of it, and, well, the takes were quite smoldering. I didn't get to the end, though. Um, I got up to around where we talked about Min Min. Um, it got some pretty nasty feedback. <laughs> wow. Uh, this guy seems to have a lot of subscribers, so I'm kind of surprised at this. Um... So I thought I'd do a video on this, because when I was doing a Smithers' King K. Rule video, I actually quite enjoyed doing that type of content, and I think it's quite interesting to do more analytical kind of stuff on this. I'm not sure if I like the kind of content, though. Like, I, I enjoyed doing it, but um, it's uh, it feels kind of like like poaching almost, but still, I think it's kind of fun, so I thought maybe I'll give it more of a shot. Um, and, he and hey, like, I, I like to share my thoughts on things, and uh, I tend to talk to myself anyway, so I may as well just, like, put the talking somewhere. <laughs> so let's uh, get into this. Um, thanks to Merck for for like uh, giving me like the the motivation to do this. Uh, <laughs> but let's, let's not delay this any further. You, you're here for this so let's just get into it. What a name. Did so today's video is guaranteed to make some people angry. Yes. <laughs> and I get that, because at the end of the day, this is my opinions talking about these characters. But when I'm talking about these characters, I mean no hatred towards any character or anybody that likes any of these DLC characters, and my job is to talk about them as a whole and talk about how they could have been completely different. So once again, this is a fair warning and just a statement letting you guys know that I am just talking about these characters in general, and lots of these characters that many people don't even like, I actually find enjoyable. So this is just me talking about the DLC as a whole, and if you want to talk about any of these in the comments, I can definitely do so with you guys. So now, with the warning out of the way, let's get into Super Smash Bros. Ultimate DLC. So something that's extremely crazy is that we're almost three years deep with Super Smash Bros. Ultimate this winter, which will be insane. And we are already down to our final DLC character reveal to be revealed to us soon, I'm sure. And as we sit and wait, we speculate who is going to end the roster. But today, we're not talking about who's ending the roster. Instead, we're kind of looking at everybody that's already been revealed and talking about maybe how this DLC wasn't the greatest that we expect it to be. Now, there's always going to be characters I don't understand why he says we here, as if as if he's like the sole opinion of everybody else. I don't know if I misheard him or misconstrued what he said, but it just seems kind of weird. Like this is meant to be like an opinion video, isn't it? Not necessarily a community centered video. I'm not sure. Anyway, let's keep let's keep this going. No, we may as well not dwell on this. Characters that some people love more, that some people don't like, that people hate. And people didn't like Pyro and Mithra. Like like from what I saw, everyone liked them. Except for like the sword fighter trope, which I think is just one of the stupidest thing. Uh, oh well. It's just natural. You're never gonna find a character that everybody in the world agrees with. That's never gonna happen. But for the most part, you can find characters that lots of people are wanting and clamoring to be in this game. And let's face it, we didn't get too many of those. But in order to explain what I mean by this, I have four categories that I think makes a DLC character a good DLC character how hyped the character is, the legacy of the character, the unique moveset of that character, and of course, the fan reception of the character. Mm, yeah, this is quite fair. Uh, although I'm not, sure if, I'm not sure if hype and reception are necessarily the things that make a good DLC character. Popularity seems like more relevant than those two. I guess hype com I guess popularity comes into hype, but uh, I'm not sure. Legacy and uniqueness, uniqueness are very good. Although, at the same time, like, Legacy implies that you want characters that are quite old with, with large uh, annals of history. Uh, this isn't always, like, a good thing. Like, for example, like, Joker getting in was, uh, was because, like, Persona 5 is a really popular game. And Persona also itself has, has a lot of history, but Joker doesn't. It's... It, it, I guess he's not wrong on anything, I just thought I'm gonna be a bit pedantic here. Because, like, I'm, I'm one of the most pedantic people you'll ever meet, so... <laughs> As I go through each individual character, I'll be placing them in each of the categories, and by the end, I'll show you exactly how many characters fit within how many categories and explain more about what I mean by this. Let's start off with Joker. I also like to put on the views just in case that also helps to look at things better. Joker had one- Oh yeah, um, so a thing he does here in these videos is he he uses the YouTube view counts as a metric for, for like the fan reception. This is a very flawed way to look at things because 
The view counts don't necessarily imply popularity. I'd say like and dislike ratios are a big part of it. I also think that, uh, that like, feedback on Twitter is quite good. Well, obviously, this is, again, like, more qualitative feedback than quantitative. Um, it's, all, it's also quite difficult to gauge fan reception because, like, Smash is, uh, is an international game. So you have, you have many different communities looking at these characters at once. For example, like, in Mexico, like, so, uh, so, slash South America, and Europe, China, China Asia, they all like King of Fighters and uh, Fatal Fury. And so there's a big disconnect between uh, international communities and America when, when, when reviewing, like, Terry's, Terry getting Smash. While at the same time, like, people who, who liked uh, Banjo and uh, Kazooie, um, that was more of a European and American thing, while everywhere else was quite confused. It's, ver it's very difficult to gauge reception. Uh, through all these facts. I just, so I understand partly why I did you use because of that, because it is typically the community take, but it's quite, it's a lot more complex than that. So I think that it is a bit, that this part of his video is a bit misleading. It also seems a bit lazy, uh, in my opinion. But at the same time, like when you're doing these types of videos, I mean, it, it is quite unfeasible to do that amount of research, especially for what's one part of a bigger picture. 1.8 million views as of today on YouTube from his reveal trailer. He was the very first character of the very first wave of Smash DLC, and I can very well say that he definitely goes within the hype character category. He was a definitely hype character, but also good fan reception. Lots of people really enjoyed Joker, and lots of people were really excited to see such a strange character make it into Smash Ultimate. Strange? He's not strange at all. Uh, Persona and Shin Megami Tensei are like... It's a, it's, a, it's a big history there. Like, in fact, it's like one of the RPGs to make RPGs a thing, uh, along with Final Fantasy. It's just that it didn't come out of Japan for a very long time, and only recently has the West really been, like, truly latching onto it. It started about 2011-ish, but then, like, eventually, like, it became less of a background RPG thing in the West to a forefront thing when, I think, SMT4 came out, I think? I'm not sure. That's, like, something I'm not quite um, at, to grips with. I know Nocta was quite popular on the PS2. So, so it couldn't even go back further. It's, but at the same time, like it wasn't really something. That, I guess this may be like a UK thing because, like in the UK, Shimagawa Tensei is that popular. So I'm not entirely sure. It's, but as far as I know, it's definitely not a strange thing at all. It's more of an inevitability considering its massive popularity in Japan at the very least. I'd say Joker was like the Japan rep for in terms of DLC because all the DLC seems to have like some popularity in like a specific region. I'll go into more, into more of that later, especially when it gets onto Terry. But a great start to the DLC because it showed that we could get some very crazy characters coming. But as far as a unique moveset in Legacy, I don't really know if he fits. Legacy would not really make the case because he only has two other games in- What? Uh, okay, so this tells me that- the, that, uh, I don't know, I, don't, I think I must have blocked this out of my memory. Um, <laughs> I think I did that with the previous, with the previous video as well, actually. But, um, Joker only has two games because Persona changes its protagonists every game. It's like Fire Emblem in that respect. So, and this also happens in Shin Megami Tensei as a whole as well. They always have a new protagonist. Sometimes they may like have some references on, I think there are a few guest appearances. But other than that, that's the most you get in terms of old protagonists. The only times where you see the, the characters together is in uh, like the Dancing All Night series. And also when he says only two, other ga uh, uh, only two games, he's actually lying. Um, so... You have Persona 5, Persona 5 Dancing All Night, you have Persona 5 Royal, and you have and you also have Persona 5 Strikers. So you, he has four games, but at the time I think he only had two, I'm not sure. I think that's the case. But then again, then again Sakurai was actually looking at Royal as well, and that's why Joker has the grappling hook. So, and so at least in terms of the, of the game industry, he had three games, just that one was in progress. So this is a bit misleading, uh, especially, and it does show that he does not seem to understand how Shin Megami Tensei works as a series. Uh, which is quite funny because I mean, he, I mean, like he talks about Fire Emblem and everything, so I thought he'd at least have someone standing there. Doesn't seem very well researched, at least. And yes, Persona as a whole is growing bigger and bigger by the years. It's not just Persona; it's Shin Megami Tensei as a whole. They are the same franchise. I don't get it. I, I, he just seems to not know what this franchise is. So maybe it's one of those people who only plays Nintendo games. That may be the case. I mean, considering his, his channel. That would make sense, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with that assumption at least for now, which isn't a bad thing, by the way. It's like, no, it's not like it's not like people can afford like to get like multiple consoles and play all these games. It's very hard to expect people to do that. Uh, so I understand wh why he would not, why he would be ignorant to that sort of thing. 
I see it a lot in the Smash community, a lot on like Smash is a grassroots thing with a lot of a lot of like um, less well off people play the game as well. I gotta consider that. But at the same time, I wouldn't really put him as a legacy character, somebody that is legacy worthy. Is legacy really a metric for how deserving a character is to get in Smash? Like legacy is definitely a thing, but some, well, sometimes you may have these one hit wonders or characters that are from these types of characters like the Shin Megami Tensei where you just want the face of the series to get in. Uh, actually, that's, I think I have to like, kind of like put three points together there. Um, so like legacy is a very poor metric because you have, sometimes have these one these one hit wonder franchises. You know, like sometimes like well, not franchises, just games. Like for example, like Undertale is a one hit wonder. Uh, well, Delta Rune exists, but like Sans, it, for example, it just takes a backseat in that. It's more of a cameo appearance. Unless, unless Delta Rune develops a different way, we don't know that yet, though. But in terms of like when when Sans became a me costume, that was there. So that's a one hit wonder in this regard. Um, so sometimes you have these, and like, does that invalidate legacy? Like, you don't need games to have a big legacy. Like, f like, uh, let's think about it here. What's a good example? Well, well anyway, um. And I, as for Persona or slash Shin Megami Tensei, you would want the, the most popular character to be in to represent the franchise as a whole. Again, like, like, um, like Shin Megami Tensei is a very big franchise where you change the protagonist every time. So Joker would qual. So would you say that Joker would qualify for legacy on that basis because it is a very big franchise, uh, but it just changes the protagonist every time. So it's not you don't have a recognizable character to attach to until now when Joker when Joker and Persona Five went viral. Is you know it's a bit of a, it's a bit weird you know, uh, but it, it, like I, I don't I think he's I think he's being a bit too dismissive. And a unique move set, I really wouldn't add that either, because the only thing that makes Joker special is he has a meter to get stronger, which we'll see in many many characters in Smash Ultimate. He has a gun. Like, come on, he has a gun. <laughs> oh, okay, so in this regard, there's actually a, a few things I want to say here. So. As an explanation for this, uh, there is there was a news article a while back saying that when Joker was being re revealed, they had to rush the voice actors uh, to get the trailer sorted. And apparently Joker's development was quite rushed, which you can actually see in some of his cloned moves. For example, he has Cloud's Down Tilt and uh, Captain Falcon's Neutral Air as his forward air. Well, but it, well, what do you say Zero Suit's forward air? But generally he does have quite a few cloned moves and stuff like that, so I do agree that his moveset isn't necessarily unique, quote unquote, but it, the way he blends it together is unlike any other character. Uh, additionally, um, he has he's a, he's a knife user, like, which I think is quite interesting. Oh, by the way, he also has Falco's Forward Smash. I just just thought about that because I've just remembered his F smashes like that. But uh, generally, like it is like you know because he has a knife that alone, it already like makes him quite unique. And also, like I said, itself is like an interesting mechanic. Obviously, it doesn't add anything special, which I think he does mention, which I do think is a very good point. Uh, over that is a different up the uh, everything is just kind of more hit boxes. Um, like it doesn't actually change his air speed or anything like Cloud's limit break either, which is another good point. But I do I do think he is unique on the fact that he well has a gun and a very interesting gun at that, and uh, he also has a, well, he has Hassan, and he has a, a you know knife user. So it's not exactly a sword fighter. He's a knife, user. you know, short range knife. I, mean, I think they could have probably like played on that more. Like he just uses knife like a sword in some respects, which I do I do find criticism worthy. Um, but yeah, like it's generally a bit weird, but like at the same time, he is it is a fair point. The only thing that Arson does is enhance all of his abilities, so Joker really doesn't have any moves as super special. Yes, he has that down B to soak up all the energy in order to bring Arson out. I mean, in terms of Tetra card, I don't think it's like necessarily that. Uh, like, oh, wait, it's not talking about Tetra card. It's just that he, he framed it poorly uh, with the footage. He's talking about Rebels Guard, which is. I mean, you could even argue that's like revenge. In fact, it's in fact it's got very similar mechanics to revenge. Same damage reduction, same super armor applied. Uh, it does use super armor by the way. But that's how it works. It so just get launched, etc. Uh, uh, there's a. I'd say I'd say it's not. I'd say like it's not that unique. Like, Joker, like Joker is definitely like a character that feels like a, like what something what should have been in a release. Similar with Byleth, but well, we'll go over that in a bit. Both of those characters, in my opinion, should have been in the base game. But besides, actually, wait, how would that work? Because three houses wasn't out. Never mind. Is that he really doesn't have anything super crazy compared to other fighters? So he has these screens where he puts like the. Um, like the the things that he qualifies for it is metric. Um, so reception, yeah. Hype, yeah. Legacy should be there. 
this character is absolutely a, a legacy one because Shin Megami Tensei again is one of the RPGs that made RPGs exist. And for some people who may say that Persona is a separate franchise, no, it just lost their Shin Megami Tensei header along the way. Like it used to be called Shin Megami Tensei Persona, not just Persona. That's something that it did, I think, leave because uh, of, fan, of fan referrals. I'm not sure if it keeps the uh, Shin Megami Tensei header in Japan. I'm not sure. I've, I've never saw it mentioning it, but I don't remember. Hero releases with 1 million views on YouTube as of today and actually was a character that I was kind of bummed out about for the first time. And believe it or not, he's probably one of my favorite DLC characters today. Base. Very based opinion. Hero is kind of crazy, and the hype for the character may not have been big in the West, but as far as- This is a lie. Um, so in Europe, uh, Dragon Quest is quite popular. In fact, especially in the UK, uh, Dragon Quest VIII sold a lot over here. Um, in fact, I, I think even some of my schoolmates were, were enjoying it and stuff as well. Like, we, we all I have a lot of good, fond memories of the games. Um, it's definitely not just a Japanese thing. Um, uh, in fact, even some Americans I remember being quite hyped for, uh, for, for it. Um, so, I don't know why he's not saying not big in the West, unless he wants to disregard Europe, Europe as a region, which a lot of American smashers do, I've noticed. Even, even in competitive play, they, they just disregard Europe, despite France like having one of the strongest regions. Uh, just no top players, but like, overall play level is quite high. But that's an whole other discussion. Uh, but yeah, this is a very strange take. Uh, not very well researched, at the very least. And also, where is he getting the views from here? Is Because uh, the thing is, there's Japanese... And uh, Western trailers. So, is he taking the views from the Japanese one, or is he taking it from uh, to, from the Western one with the non million views? That's something he never mentions in the video, and I'm very curious about what about where he got that data from. And uh, although again, view count is hardly relevant as a metric. You, if you want to, like, what you'd want to do is look at the like and dislike ratio. Uh, if you're going to use YouTube at all, which again, like, I don't think is quite is necessarily a good thing. Um. Like, you want to take Twitter opinions, you want to take stuff from other places. So maybe even Smashboard. Smashboard still has quite a lot of DLC discussion. Maybe Facebook groups. Or, or like, there's a lot of places to take this from. Um, so I'm quite curious about that. As far as for Japan, Japan went absolutely insane over the characters, so we have to... Funnily enough, on that note, um, J Japan basically had the inverse reaction to Hero uh, compared to America. Like, America was hyped about Banjo, but not Hero. In Japan, people were asking who Banjo was. Uh, like, that was a thing that happened quite frequently like, for, on a few of the message boards. Um, it's, quite, it's quite funny to look at. Uh, <laughs> I think it was on like, Nico Nico or something? I'm not sure. I, for, I forgot the platform. But I remember seeing a few details about that. Uh, but for Hero, they went absolutely nuts. Which is correct. It's a very, very interesting dynamic. Which is, again, like I, I think that's part of the purpose of this Smash DLC. That's like, something I've noticed actually including them in the hype character category. As far as legacy goes, obviously Dragon Quest is gigantic around the world, so there's nothing else we can say. So he talks about how the West, it wasn't big in the West, but he talked about Dragon Quest being a gigantic worldwide franchise, which seems to make him contradict himself. If it's a gigantic franchise across the world, then obviously everyone like everyone likes it, which is true. A lot of, um, it is it is popular around the world. But he doesn't say uh, Heroes Reveal is bigger in the West. I don't get it. It's, it's blatant contradiction in statements say there. In a unique moveset, Hero has over 30 different special moves. Not only that, four completely different Hero characters that play as different skins for the character, which is incredibly insane when you think about that. And as far as fan reception goes, I think the 1 million views tells you how excited people were to see Hero in Smash. I know that criticism when using views as a metric, he says that the views show excitement when that's just people viewing the trailer. Now, the purpose of a trailer is to give you information that will that would persuade you to purchase. So you're meant to go into these trailers with an unbiased perspective. So the view counts are people who clicked the link and viewed the video. Doesn't mean they liked it or disliked it. That's where the like-dislike ratio comes from, not the actual view count. So this is a ver another very misleading use of the view counts, which again, I, don't, I still don't think is a very good metric. I don't understand why he did why he's talking about them in this way. I really think he I really think he could have thought that through more. Yeah, this is this is correct. Just in general. Hero is a fantastic addition to the game, and I think he's quite fun. I know some people criticize his competitive uh, his competitiveness, uh, especially because of the language barriers, which I do think is a very big problem. I do still think they should have put the symbols in the listings. 
to make up for the like competition and also make it easier to speed read the menu because some people are better with image recognition than than a word recognition which i think would have add, added that character's accessibility factors so you know there's a lot of things they could have done to improve heroes implementation but i still think he's a very fantastic addition to the game Banjo and Kazooie, probably the biggest character reveal yet with 5.8 million views on YouTube. Now this character clearly- Considering 5.8 million views, I'm assuming that he's taking this from the Western trailers. Just off that on my mind. I may- I, I don't- I'm not gonna look for proof or anything because like, I don't want to just like show a search bar and everything, I don't like doing that. <laughs> just want to be more private about that sort of thing, but like yeah, you got the idea has the hype character category. It was extremely hype, it had grown men crying, it had me in an emotional train wreck. So that was obviously a category that Banjo will fit in. But Japan didn't really care about him. They didn't know his uh, existence at all. His game sold like shit in Japan, in fact. Uh, you could, like, that's something you could just look up yourself. Uh, I, may cite the, I may add a citation in the description or something, but like his... In Japan, this character was basically unknown. Like they did, I, I remember a lot of people in Japan criticizing uh, people oppressing Banjo. It was a much more contentious. Um, at least in the West, yeah, Banjo is quite a big character. Very, very storied uh, history. Like people, a lot of people sing praises about him. Um, but even like hell, it's, this is like a very specific age demographic as well. Even in the West, like I, like. Especially with a lot of a lot of like younger people, they don't actually know that Banjo exists at all. This is a thing I've noticed uh, quite a lot when I was talking with teenagers about the character. Uh, so, even even there, it's very weird. Like I know I remember like one kid who only remembered nuts and bolts, and he was like, "Oh, that game was shit." And I was like, "Oh, huh, you, you don't know about the sixty four games?" And he was like, "No." It's again like it's it's a it's so you're specifically targeting people who had an N sixty four, and. Um, and all who are uh, aged like uh, 20 and up, roughly. And these are all people in the West only. So Banjo overall is, uh, it's very, very, very interesting. Um, and in fact, also, if you factor in that not many people actually had in 64, and the console was actually a commercial failure in, in terms of like sales compared to the PS1 and, P and uh, Xbox, especially, especially in, like, in Europe, at least, in my experience. Um, so it's, you know, it's a very, 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 it's a deceptively small demographic. Well, the game says become a cult classic, so you may not want to factor in that, but it's definitely not not as one-sided as he's framing it. He is a highly requested character, but it's again very specific to age demographic, and they some people who fr most frequently talk online. As far as a legacy character, Banjo's definitely a legacy character. Just because they don't have too many modern games, or really any modern games, doesn't mean anything. Banjo was actually considered to be the best 3D platformer of all time, and people still debate how it could be better than Mario 64 still. He definitely has a legacy, that's without a doubt. I agree with this, but I do think that factory, that when he factors in that, that joke is only in two games and then talks about this, um, I, I, I find that to be almost comical in my opinion in my personal opinion um it's it's quite hypocritical to go saying that joker only has two games and then and then go on to say that, that bad joke only having three or well, four i think it was now actually is was it three yeah yeah so if so if, so if he has like like three four games like that does mean a lot wait wait it's a four it's a game boy advance game isn't there yeah um so four four Going on to say that doesn't mean anything is very misleading, uh, because if you're going to go on and say that Joker being in two games is it means a lot, I guess you could argue age age, but even then, like you're not factoring the, the size of Joker's franchise. I definitely, I definitely believe the character has a strong legacy though, especially because like Banjo Kazooie and, Ban and Banjo Tooie are very, very big cult classic games. Like even even among like some Japanese audiences, they do actually think about it a lot, especially the K, the K Rule fans. Uh, in Japan, they definitely all do factor in banjo. It's a ver it's a ver still very very contradictory take. This is the correct one, not the Joker one though. So he is correct on this, but I don't like how he's framing it with the in comparison to the other one. As far as unique moveset, maybe not because Banjo actually has a very very boring moveset when you think about it. The no, his moveset's badass. Like. He has a berry throw, which is something only K rule has. Oh, well, no, Rob, Rob as well. Sorry. Um, uh, not Lucas. Lucas is only aesthetic. Uh, but uh, his moveset as a whole is, is like 
He has like a, like a unique like multi multi up aerial. He has he has he has multiple jumps, which allow him to do lots of mix ups in neutral. His the, the egg thing, uh, the egg thing is really cool, but very underpowered in my opinion. But it's very cool. They like it's not boring. Like like it, I, his play style is boring at, in competitive play. Not that Musa itself is boring. It's just that his it, it's just that he just so happened to be very easy to zone to zone with. And his combo, and his, and his combo game and, and run speed and stuff and awkward traction make it very difficult to be aggressive with him. So naturally, when you're playing Banjo in practice, you're going to you're going to to play him in a campy way. That does, but it doesn't mean his moveset is boring. His moveset is fantastic. The only thing special is he has the side B with five golden feathers, which is only five uses, which is really nothing when you think about it. It's just a strong attack that only has five uses every time you regen. But besides that, Banjo's kind of bare bones, I hate to admit that. So considering the way he's talked about like special traits and unique movesets so far, I believe that he's going on about he's going on about like unique mechanics, not unique movesets. Like Joker's Rebels Guards, uh, Sephiroth's Warbling Angel, stuff like that. I in which case, like, okay, like, do, do, do all DLC characters have to have ridiculous meters? I don't think so. This is why I think Byleth is a fine addition. It's a nice breath of fresh air because you don't need every character to have this ridiculous gimmick. It, like that. That, in my opinion, that even demeans the N64 cast and everything because, like, a lot of older characters don't have that type of thing. So I think I think it's nice to have like characters with these more so-called mundane things, um, like be like applicable. I think I think like. I think more mundane sets is just fine. I think it's. I think it's. I think. I, well, I, I don't think mundane is the right term here. Like um, classic, sort of. Like just no meters or anything. You don't need ridiculous gimmicks. But as far as fan reception, clearly 5.8 million views shows you what people thought of the character, and the fact that the character has been requested since Smash Melee shows how much people really love Banjo. So I think I, I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna clarify a few things because I think my overall view of this was quite iffy. Um, I believe that Banjo is probably one of the best additions to Smash ever. Like I, I, I will say that he is a fantastic addition to the game. Well, I do think that people misrepresent his overall popularity and from a worldwide perspective, which I because again like N64 was a very limited console in terms of sales, a very small install base. So, but the N64 grew to a cult classic later on. That's a thing that I didn't I didn't factor in like properly here, which is why he's such a cool classic. Was like you know, N64 owners all had the same games. That's the thing because very small, very small install base with a small library. You uh, but but at the same time a very a very strong resolve as an, from Nintendo fans, which is why you see like like which is why when you talk to a PS1 owner, they'll talk about they'll probably say like oh yeah I, I had a like Digimon World 2003, but you won't but if you talk to another person they'll say oh I like GTA London. Uh, but if you talk to somebody who um, owned N64, they'll all say Super Mario 64, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, Banjo Kazooie, etc. So that's why it comes up. Um, but again, but again, like I do, I do think it's a very popular character, but it's specifically a Western thing, which I think he didn't factor in here. Which is why I think that like the way you framed Hero is a bit weird. Uniqueness is totally there. This character's great. He's great. Come on, give him it. <laughs> so as you can tell, so far these characters have been pretty good, but this is where we start to hit a little bit of a roadblock. No, don't. This is the, this is the Gringo take. I, 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 I forgot most of what you said, but I, I'm just like, oh, this is such an American. This is this this review is just one of the most American ones I've ever seen. Like this is like proper ignorant. Terry. Terry only got about 240 to 400,000 views on YouTube. People really just didn't know who he was. As far as a hype character goes, not really. I don't think he saw like the Latin American reaction compilations because like those things were like more insane than like like some like Etika videos. Like they went crazy. Like the the, the the like like my goodness. Like all like so let me just put this, let me just explain this because a lot, of, a lot of American players don't seem to understand this this thing with Terry. SNK has never really been a hit in America, and this guy is American. I won't clarify. And so, you have to get this disconnect where in terms of like um, in, in, you have to get this disconnect between the American and wider communities when you talk about SNK games, and it annoys me to no end because like I I strongly believe that SNK is is still like incredible games. 
the, 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 the their franchises are just incredible. They're like they're like they're kind of like a second Capcom. That's what I consider them to be. So here's the thing. Like, so here's the thing. Like, so SNK is a big in Mexico uh, and other and other like South American areas like Brazil, um, but also in Asian countries, which people don't talk about. You still have a Fatal Fury special scene in China and Korea, I believe. Uh, they have, like their streams get loads of views. And also in Japan, it, like like King of Fighters is quite popular. If King of Fighters ninety eight still has a massive scene of Fightcade. It it like Terry has a massive legacy and his popularity across across the globe, except in America, which is just damn unfortunate because he gets disconnect, is incredible. He he is a very, very influential character, and without him, Smash wouldn't have the mechanics it does, because Smash took mechanics from King of Fighters and some I think some of from Fatal Fury, like with rolls and stuff. I do, I, but I, actually, they're not quite. No, like rolls, rolls are also giga fires here. Yeah. Um, but anyway, but anyway, like, like a lot of a lot of this is just very misleading, and it only gets worse from here. Legacy character, still not really unique move set. Yes, I don't like how he only goes not really in terms of legacy here. I don't like that. It's very, it's again, again, extremely misleading and very and astoundingly ignorant. Because, again, Fight of Fury is why King of Fighters exists, and King of Fighters is why Smash exists. Terry is the root of Smash, in, in many respects. And his appearance was, again, an inevitability. It's just that people from- it's just that some people just didn't grow up with it, and that's fair. Like, Terry is a Banjo-type rep, in my respect. Like, that's why I, that's why I would refer to him as, like, King K. Rule, Banjo, Terry, these are all very similar characters. Characters from franchises that- they don't really get appearances in much, although then again, Terry is still in King of Fighters, but Fatal Fury's a franchise is dead because of uh, respect to developers, I think it was. Uh, my, my, my friend Abby Street would know more about that. But in general, the, it's very dumb to say this because they're all from, they're all like that type of character, nostalgia reps, so to speak. That's why Terry exists, and he's a fantastic addition to the game. I'm not, I think I think I think that Kazuya probably could have come earlier than Terry, but even, even that is still fantastic. He actually does have a kind of unique move set. He actually has a back B for the first time ever than just a side B. So he has a forward and a back B, but also has three special attacks once he reaches a certain percentage. Uh, he only has two. I think he's referred to as Final Smash, but he only has two. Power guys are Buster Wolf. Oh, those are super special moves. Now we have a lot of characters that have kind of a KO meter, but actually he has three brand new entire attacks that he gains, which does give him the uniqueness category. And as far as fan reception, as you- Wait, is that all he's gonna go over? Like, Terry has got way more than just that. He, ha he, he, ha he has like, char like a, charge a charge special, which is something that many people said was unfeasible, but like they somehow made it work. Like they made it work very well, in fact, because of the way they, the way they did ch added charge partitioning, all kinds of like fighting game techniques to help charge that move. Stuff that like you wouldn't see like on any other character. He's a fan he is uh, hell even his spot dodge attack. Like this character is so faithful to his to his home game. It's just incredible. It's so fun and nostalgic to play with. Like like it's just so odd to see that this this disconnect. Like he he's probably one of the most well designed characters in the history of Smash as well. I think he's very he's very well balanced, especially when he has like desperation moves from from Fatal Fury three. As you could tell, people really didn't care about Terry. Now, this could very well just been somebody that Sakurai wanted. In fact, I think it's been confirmed that Sakurai really wanted Terry for a long time, and he was super excited to talk about the character, which is fine. He's clearly allowed to have characters that he wants, but Terry just didn't really resonate with anybody. That is... that is... bullshit. <laughs> like, if he's using YouTube views as a metric for something that is like uh, you shouldn't be using them for, like again, like this is such a stupid way to look at things. Like again, like Latin American audiences, Chinese audiences, Japanese audiences, European audiences, they all liked Terry's edition. Of course, it wasn't like it wasn't like woo yeah baby sort of things. It was like I was like yo, that's just cool, dude. Like, that's what that's that's what it's, that's the kind of thing. It's not so. Not a rousing success, but like it's more like it's more like a, hey, this is this is awesome, dude. Terry's in Smash. Like again, like, like yeah, Sakurai wants the character, but I'm, I'm pretty sure, it, like that's like that wasn't the sole thing. Like keep in mind, Nintendo's the one making the decisions this time. I'm assuming, so like yeah, obviously Sakurai may have had some influence on it, but 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 like this was the thing that this was the decision that Nintendo had the final say on. 
So it's so it's stupid. It's a stupid take. Very again, very ignorant. Such a stupid review of this character of, of this character's edition. Like this character's massive history. Like Fatal Fury is one of the most influential fighting games ever. Like yeah, while while it died off, it was still like huge. My my goodness me, like. Like without like without Fatal Fury, you wouldn't you wouldn't have like half the stuff that you set up in Fire Games today, and you would also wouldn't have King of Fighters, which is like the Super Smash Brothers of fighting games in love in love respects. It's just that it's SNK doing it, not Nintendo. Awful. Awful. Look at that. The reception, but there's loads of reception. All sorts. This character's man, dude. Damn. <laughs> and then we finally end pack one with Byleth. And yeah, this one was the nail of the DLC that hurt a lot of people. Byleth only received a nail? Like, when you say nail, uh, I'm assuming it means in, for, in reference to nail in the coffin. But like, does that mean the DLC was bad? Is he saying that the DLC was awful? That's, that's just stupid. Also, another thing, I did, you didn't bring up plant, Plants DLC before this. Come on, give, give Piranha Plant a bit of a roast, come on. Piranha Plant was a funny addition, though. I, lo I love that thing. It's such a weird addition, but like, it's really cool. But this is a really... This is really dumb. Like, I don't think you should have, you should say it was like Nail in the Coffin when there's like multiple characters that people absolutely fucking loved. Received about 230,000 views, the lowest of all the DLC characters on YouTube. And as you can tell, many people were very upset. As of today, there's 10,000 likes and 6,000 dislikes. Um, this isn't right. Uh, the video was re-uploaded, I believe. Uh, or at least the like dislike count was reset. Uh, there was like 64,000 dislikes on it originally. That's what I remember. On YouTube, and people were just so upset that a Fire Emblem character, once again, was what was going to end our DLC pack. Once again? Karin wasn't the final DLC. Karin was like came alongside Bayonetta, but like Bayonetta was the one last one revealed, so that's such a weird that's a weird way to put it. That was the only reason people were kind of upset, and I feel like if this character was any other part of the DLC lineup, it would have been less of a blow than what it was when it actually was revealed. I actually agree with this point. I think that Byleth is actually a very unique and very fun character. I like that I like the lack of of stupid mechanics. I, I I'm really glad that Byleth is the gimmick. But like, you know, like, well, not necessarily a gimmick character, but like, they don't have any, any character gimmick, so to speak. If you get what I mean, there. I think the Bible would be five of what if if they, they weren't the fight the final DLC. I absolutely agree with that. Byleth does not fall under any categories, believe it or not. It was not a hype character, it's definitely not a legacy character, as Three Houses came out just around the same time that Smash was actually released. This is a this is a dumb take again. Very dumb take. Why do you like this? Um, again, like Fire Emblem has legacy because Fire because Fire Emblem has a, is a massive sprawling franchise. But so Byleth has legacy by franchise alone. So if you're going to go if you're going to use legacy as, a, as an actual like metric for character inclusion, Byleth does still fit that solely because of that of that part. And Fire Emblem again is one of Nintendo's biggest franchises, which is again. <laughs> Again, a very important aspect. Um, I lost my train of thought. God damn it! Uh, but yeah, like, like Fire Emblem is one of Nintendo is one of Nintendo's biggest franchises, and that's why you have a lot of Fire Emblem characters in Smash, which is something that people consistently seem to forget. Like, like Fire Emblem is like huge. <laughs> And of course, unique moveset, not really at all. Just because she uses different items and different weapons when she attacks, doesn't every other character do that? Doesn't Link technically have other weapons and items, such as a boomerang, a bow, and a bomb, depending on what attack he uses? And like Mr. Game of Watch, for example, changes his entire body depending on what moves he uses. So that wasn't really any different. Now, if the actual weapons could be picked and chose and actually change the moveset based on what weapon you had, that would have been different. But no, I'm not going to actually put her under the unique move set. I don't, I don't understand this point. Like, he referenced like two characters out of like eighty. Like, like, okay, I, I, I respect, I do get his point. I do think it's a very good one. In fact, like, I do believe that Byleth could have been better if you had a move set switch thing. But considering how the DLC, how his DLC is gone, how some characters are quite rushed, like Joker, I, and I do, I do think that it's like a bit of a weird thing. 
Another point to bring up is that, like, I believe Fire Level was meant to be a release. I remember some murmurs about that. I think there was, like, some leaks from, like, that were otherwise verified that said that Fire was meant to be in. Um, I, I may have to do some look, some digging on, like, some citations for that, but I do think it was in a reset error thread. Um, but otherwise, I do, I do think, I do think it would have been better, but I don't think it was feasible. Uh, because, like, I don't think he understands how big changing a Musa is. It's not very, it's, it's, you're literally asking for a transformation character with four, with, uh, four transformations. That's what you're asking for, which is stupid. You have to, like, I, I gotta, I, I gotta have it where they change specials as well. Is it just gonna be normals? Like, again, if it's, like, just normals, you have tilts, smashes, jab, aerials. Like, you have, you have to do animations for all of that. And you also have to, like, actually, like, well, and if you go to change the specials, that's even more. And also that means you have to have that special mechanics for each one. Because special is, something, is like, crazy. <laughs> Like specials are the funny moves where you have all the stupid mechanics and stupid hitboxes and stuff. So it's very unfeasible to ask it because you're basically asking for four characters of one, which is stupid, astoundingly stupid. I don't, I don't think he quite gets that. Like, yes, you don't have to make another model, which is a massive, massive, massive thing. But add it, but the, the difficult part of modeling, in my opinion, is doing the animations and making them work. So yeah, not very. Also, also, wouldn't four characters of one be very inaccessible? Like, I, I can see it being a very inaccessible thing. And also, when you have the axe, because everything's all sluggish, why are you going to, like, change the S SB and everything? How do you bounce around that? How do you bounce all the moves as well? It's such a short time span, because you obviously got all these different, obvious different attacks, so which all have to have different, all have different frame data, all sorts of things, you have to consider the competitive implications of these moves. So, like, and also, you have to ensure that all of these forms have their own little niches that people want to use. Like, like, why would, like, why would you want to use the axe over the lance, for example, because they're both quite slow? Like, but you use the so lances for range, you have the, like, the axe for the kill power, but you also have to bounce these around stuff so that, you know, so that you can actually justify using each one in a different instance, while also ensuring that people can like, have at least one that they really like that they can use all the time. It's a very, very, very complicated thing, I don't think he actually thought about that. In terms of game balance, it's a very, very difficult thing to do. I would love it, I'd absolutely love it, but at the same time, it's, you have to consider feasibility in a DLC environment. If it was, in, if it was during the game's development, I would say yes, by all means. But here, no. And even then, like, I mean, like, it's, it, you're basically co you're basically programming Pokemon Trader, but again. And as far as fan reception, uh, yeah, I think you know the answer to that. Fire Emblem is a big franchise, and people are quite happy to have Byleth uh, in that community. There's definitely some reception there. It's obviously not much because of considering the timing and everything, but it's definitely there. Uniqueness should be there, and legacy by just by just by association. Don't worry though, to start off pack 2 we'll have a banging character, right? Uh, Min Min's revealed from ARMS, a game that many people never even played. ARMS sold quite a bit. It just didn't last long. That's what, you, that's what you're talking about. It sold a lot, and that's why the Min Min was added. And also because it's a new Nintendo franchise that they want to push. So see that ARMS 2 is going to be made because Min Min is included. This is an executive decision by Nintendo, considering that Nintendo is the one making decisions for this pack. It's just very stupid. Besides me, don't get me wrong. I played arms. I'm probably the only person I've known in this world that played arms as much as I did. But uh, personal experience is not very good in a, in a in a debate like this. I mean, I guess it is an opinion thing, but at the same time, I don't think personal experience is being is very important here when you want to use fan reception as a metric. Yes, we have Min Min. Min Min got 1.2 million views, surprisingly enough, on YouTube, so clearly the fan reception was actually there. Now, I don't know if that was just because it was the first character, and actually technically the first character reveal, as we just knew it was going to be an ARMS character, we didn't know who at the time, but I have to actually give her the fan reception, because people clearly was interested and liked her. Uh, very odd the way he's framing this. He's framing it as if he's surprised, which implies that he, that he, do, that he did think that, which is okay, that's in your opinion section. But at the same time, like, well, like with the terms of the views, yes, it was, yes, she was the first character, and also, but also, like, we already knew it was going to be an ARMS character, so if you're going to use, if you're going to use views as a metric, that this implies that there is more interest in an ARMS character than ever, because we already knew it was going to get an ARMS character. So, and, and so if people didn't care about Min Min, then, well, they wouldn't view the video. Um, so I guess I'll, I guess we're like that's more of an addition to his point than actually criticizing it. I think is I think he's, it's a very good point, but at the same time I just want to like contextualize this a bit more. Min Min also has a very unique move set as she has one of the longest reaches and clearly the longest reach in the game. She has the ability. 
Is that really unique when, you, when we had Byleth added and then Sephiroth right after? Well, not right after, but like Sephiroth was added later. Like, there's a lot of, there's, like, it's like, like, also has a lot of big range characters. Uh, like, especially to, especially the DLC, like, lots of characters have really big hitboxes, so is that really a, a unique trait? I mean, I mean, he goes on, to, he goes on, I think he goes on to mention, like, a few other traits, which I do all agree with wholeheartedly, but I do think that the long reach one is not necessarily the, the most important one. It, like, eh, I think, I, I think, I think I'd prefer, I'd prefer, like, the arm switching thing. I think that was the, the best part of it. Especially since, like, there's this really funny technique where you can, like, Use that to cancel your landing like with your aerials. I'm not sure if they removed that in a patch though. Ability to throw opponents and get stronger from her throws and grows that dragon arm, and she can of course change her arms at free will, and it actually changes her moveset, something that I actually wish Byleth could do. So Min Min Again, the Byleth thing is very unfeasible, uh, as I as I explained. It's very difficult to balance a character that with that many moves moves if you're going to do that. Um there's just so much more there. I, I've already mentioned, it's just whatever. And definitely had the unique side of things. As far as legacy character, clearly ARMS isn't a legacy game, and a hype character, I don't think people were kind of jumping for joy when they found out Min Min was coming. No, Min Min was probably one of the more well-received ones. Like, not many people, like, criticized it. They were more like, oh, that's, that's cool. That's that, that was the take. It wasn't like, 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 it's very odd. Oh, that was hype, come on. But thankfully, ne actually, another thing I want to say, like the way he puts in legacy is again is very unfair to new characters, which I think again is something applied to Joker as well. Like it's a very, it's very, very stupid. I love him. Like, because you, because like if you're raising characters on those four things, you're inherently giving bias to characters with expansive histories. When, when you, when again, there's one hit one the franchises, which, which again with Min Min, like in terms of like a real race system, it's inherently gamed against her for no reason. Next, Nintendo comes in with Steve from Minecraft with a whopping 4 million views as of today on YouTube, second to just Banjo and Kazooie with their 5.8 million. Steve obviously fits in every single category. He's a very hype character with a super hype trailer. He's. I was expecting to deride this just because it's Minecraft, and I'm very shocked to hear this. <laughs> it's a breath of fresh air because Steve absolutely deserved to get it. It's a very fantastic addition to the game. Definitely a legacy character, as Minecraft is one of the top-selling video games of all time. It is the be most best-selling game of all time. The big biggest sales. Unique moveset for sure. I mean, the guy can literally build blocks on stage, and he can even, you know, craft weapons. I mean, what kind of character could do that in Smash? They literally had to rework on every single stage just so that his blocks would work properly. Just want to say this is correct. They had to, they had to, they had to change a lot, of, a lot of stage parameters to make this work properly. That's dedication, and the fact that they had four completely different characters, but the zombie Enderman and Alex just to fit the character slots, just like Hero. Those are character slots. Those are costume slots. Just want to point that out. It's very different. Is awesome, and the fan reception was clearly through the roof. Next up we have Sephiroth. Sephiroth was definitely a hype character with great fan reception. Everybody was super hyped to see another Final Fantasy character in a Final Fantasy 7 character and the fan reception clearly was really good with 2 million views on YouTube. And as far as legacy goes, definitely a legacy character as one of the most popular villains of all time. Almost everybody knows Sephiroth even if you've never played Final Fantasy 7 like myself. I'm sorry I have to play the game. I need to. Sinful. Uh, one thing I did, one thing I didn't mention. Uh, was like, like, I, 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 I this is more of a tongue in cheek thing, but like when people, like some people criticize Sephiroth's position as another anime sword fighter, but I want to say he's not just an anime sword fighter. He is the anime sword fighter. He's the one who kicked it all off. Well, not quite. There were a few for you before, but like he is the one that really, really well and truly like kicked off the trope, spawned a lot of a lot of edgy anime sword fighter characters. Very funny. And as far as unique moveset, unfortunately, I don't think Sephiroth really has a unique moveset. He's a sword fighter with just a long sword. He doesn't really have anything crazy that really separates himself from anybody else. Yes, he gets the one wing effect, which really just makes him a stronger version of himself once again, like almost half of the roster already has. Half? No, this is, this is almost strictly an ultimate thing. Half the roster? There's 80 characters and there's like, what, like 15 that have meters? Which in my opinion is a very good balance. 
Um, also, like, when it comes to, like, sword fight things, like, he's definitely got one of the most unique movesets among sword fighters, especially with his forward air and stuff. They made, they definitely made a massive effort to make him unique, and I think, I think they did quite a good job, especially the orb stuff. We don't really have a character that does setups like that, and I think that's a really cool addition to the game. Um, they definitely got very creative with him. Um, but, like, but I think, but like, part of that issue is just the fact that there is a lot of sword fighters in the game by virtue of Fire Emblem's presence in, in the game industry leading to more characters in the game. So, uh, so I'm not really sure what you want from this. Like, like, what more do you want? Like, Sephiroth is in the game, he's a good inclusion. Like, like, how do you make him unique other than, like, adding safer Sephiroth instead? Which is a very dumb thing to do, in my opinion, especially considering that that's not the iconic form, but also a bit spoilery in some respects. But again, that's his Final Smash anyway, so who really cares? And Final, Final Fantasy VII's been out forever, so that's another th thing to add to it. It just seems to be a very, very odd thing to say after saying all that, because if you if you want Sephiroth in the game, you're already accepting that there's got there's a lot of sword fighters and that will and that will have an indirect effect on his moveset. Again, like his animations are fantastic, and you also use the sword in like a two-handed way as well, which is another interesting thing. And a lot of his moves are also very faithful to his games. Like for example, you have Octo Slash, you also have the 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 funny down air. <laughs> the funny meme. Uh, and also like again that forward air he has is really nice for recovery. It's a really interesting property. Well, I don't really know what he wants. Like, how? I, like, I suppose the the thing I want to say here is, how would you make him more unique? Which he doesn't go over. Prevents him from flinching and hits extra hard. So for the most part, Sephiroth is just an average character with a very long sword, but he definitely does fill the other categories. Again, like, how would you make him more unique? I don't know how you would do it. I guess you could like make add more spells to his arsenal because obviously he doesn't use materia, and I, I, I believe that some he doesn't use some of the materia that you have in his like the sequence where you are fighting alongside him in a memory sequence. So like, I don't know what you'd want. I don't. I seriously don't know what you want. Like, I want to. I want to get the, that those, those moves, which I think was scared would be a very good addition. But like, it just seems very silly. Now, just under Byleth as the least viewed character, we have Pyra and Mithra from Xenoblade 2, with only 320,000 views on YouTube as of today. I think I want to bring up, I've noticed that the views have been steadily decreasing as he goes along, except for like with Banjo. So, in this, so, as a, to latch onto this point a bit more, considering that you're saying as of today, when you use the views as a metric, which I've already said is a very stupid thing to do, um, are you not considering that the views would increase over time, especially because of the eShop views and stuff like that? I just believe the, the, the trailers are on the eShop and stuff like that. Are you not factoring in those types of those types? It's just a uh, very odd. Pyra and Mithra are actually a really unique character slot, and I actually was very interested in the character joining the game from the very beginning of the days, back when people thought that they might be main roster, and I definitely do think that Xenoblade needed an extra character rep. But unfortunately, the characters didn't really have any hype behind them, the legacy behind them, really nothing, as there's only a couple Xenoblade games, and of course, you know. Hold on a bit. Hold on. Hold on. So he goes over the past Xenoblade games, but then he doesn't go over the. But then he doesn't go uh, recognize SMT. What? That's so hypocritical. Especially considering that, that, they, that Xenoblade is another one of those franchises where you do replace the, the protagonist every time. So that doesn't. So now his Joker point doesn't make sense at all. What? What do you want about me? Bloody Nora. Xenoblade 2 really didn't have anything legacy worthy about it, and the fan reception. What? Z like. So if you got to. Okay, so if he's got to consider the entire franchise. Just remember that Xenoblade Chronicles had an entire fan movement to get it translated. It was an entire fandom movement. A gigantic one, in fact. In fact, I, I, I can't... I, I forgot the name of it. But you could do any amount of research. And Xenoblade's existence in the West is strictly because of Nintendo fans and their pushes to get it translated. And then Nintendo put a massive amount of work into that. With the voice acting and everything, the gr the quality of the localization was incredible. This is such an absurd take. Xenoblade has some of the most interesting histories of any Nintendo franchise from a community perspective. And Smash is a community game. 
Therefore, any Xenoblade representation is is a homage to that by by itself. That's why I believe that Shulk is one of the most deserving characters in Smash of all, of all time. His addition to the game was incredible. And if you're going to consider the, the past games as legacy when your character is not the protagonist, which Pyramid aren't, then you must then you must acknowledge that that that, that, that was the case. You must acknowledge that the past that the, that the past of Xenoblade Chronicles itself was massive. Like this is such it's so contradictory, so so contradictory. Yeah, as you could tell, it just was like, why Nintendo? But once again, the unique move said obviously they can swap characters. This is not. In terms of the why Nintendo thing, like, well, that's a rhetorical thing. It's meant to refer to what the to what people responded with. The why was because uh, they wanted to add Rex initially. Now I believe there was a few leaks that said that they was planned for the game and they got cut. So Pirate Myth was an answer to that because because they saw that they those characters were more popular. And also because I believe their voice actor interacts with the community quite a bit. Uh, I know that the, the, the Discord is, is partnered. Not been possible since Smash Brothers Brawl with Sheik and Zelda being able to swap between each other. This time it's back with Pyra and Mithra being a heavyweight and a lightweight, but actually their movesets change completely, which is super- Their weights don't change. They have the same weight, it's just their frame date is different. Just want to point that out, because it's not- it's uh, just objectively wrong. Super exciting, and it's probably one of the most unique characters within the DLC pack, but as far as any other category, once again, she misses the mark. No, you're just not understanding the legacy point. You're just contradicting yourself in lots of areas. I don't understand this point at all. It's just very odd. Of course the reception wasn't there, and the hype wasn't there, which... Actually, speaking of that, like, isn't the hype and reception just the same thing? Yeah, it is, isn't it? Like, huh? I just realized that. I was just, I was just like thinking about that a little bit. Huh. Neat. And last but not least, we have today's character, Kazuya. Now, I don't think we can dive into this character super deep yet because it's still kind of fresh out there. We don't know too much. But as of today, Kazuya has 560,000 views, which is pretty okay. I still would. That's like the most views you can get, like, from an opening like that. That's an incredible opening, especially considering, like, the past ones, if you're using views as a metric. If you're using views as a reception metric, that's massive. And there's a reason for that, because Tekken is the only fighting game franchise to have outsold Smash Brothers. I just want to point that out, which is something that a lot of people forget. Like, Kazuya's inclusion was literally just the next step if you're FGC representation wouldn't really consider him a hype character. As far as everybody's reactions that I've seen so far, there's probably only one out of like a hundred people that I've seen actually jump up and down and go crazy. That is so bullshit, mate. What circles are you in? This dude is clearly in like circles that only play Nintendo games because oh my, oh my god, that is so misleading. It's so bad. Like, holy shit, dude. <laughs> No way! No way! <laughs> I was watching the E3 live chats and stuff, they went crazy about Kazuya! Oh my god, dude! Over Kazuya, even Tekken fans were kind of just chill about this character. I don't know if it was the trailer or what, but many people weren't super excited. As they were? What, what, what cliques did you interact with that to re who reacted like that? I'm sorry? As far as legacy, definitely Kazuya gets the legacy as Tekken is a pretty known fighting game from everybody around the world. Now, It's THE most well known, along with Street Fighter. And also like, Kazuya has, has like, has been, cro has been, been in quite a few crossover titles. Not as many as Hihachi, but, it, but I have a bit of explanation for that as well. The reason why Hihachi didn't get in, uh, it, I don't think it's the Mii costume. Some people would be used to reinforce that, but it's because his voice actor died, and in Japan, there's a culture around that where if if you if a, a voice actor dies, it's it's almost like discontinuing a character. In mo like for example, Igor's voice actor in Japan died quite a long time ago, but they still include Igor in the games, just recycling his old voice lines. They'll never ever get a different voice actor. If they do, it's a very controversial thing. In the West, you don't have that culture. Sometimes you'll have people replace others, but even in the West, it's still quite frowned upon in voice acting industries. It's just kind of fucked up, really. Because it's like, like, if you're voice acting a character, you're becoming that character. That's that's the mentality behind it. 
which is why I believe Hihachi wasn't included. Um, generally, I think it's a very odd thing, odd, odd thing here. Like, he doesn't seem to under quite understand fighting games. I don't think this guy plays them. Like, like if he played fighting games, um, you, like, Kazuya, you would understand is just the next step in regards to, like, how to improve FGC representation. Especially because, again, Tekken is one of the few fighting games to actually, like, go with Smash. As far as the character himself could be different, because I don't think too many people out there know exactly who Kazuya is individually. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm sorry, I can't. <laughs> oh, no way. No way. It's <laughs> Oh, no way, dude. No way. He, he's part of an archetype that you literally just call Mishima in fighting games. There's an entire character archetype named after him. Like, like this is just the thing. Like, like okay, so like, Ryo and Ken Shoto is Terry is Terry, uh, Kazuya is a Mishima. That's the, that's the, those are the character archetypes that these are based, are based on. Like, Terry is just not an archetype at all, it's just a okay thing. People call him a Shoto, don't. Shut the fuck up. Go away. But we're going to give it to him because of the Tekken legacy. But unique moveset. He's one of the main characters of the Tekken franchise. Like, just a massive part of the lore. It's not just legacy. He's literally just one of the faces of the, of the franchise. I'm sorry. Like, you have Jin, you have Kazuya, you have, you have Hayachi. Those are the three mains. There are others, but like, those are the ones that you you ones the ones you know about the most. This is just stupid. Like... Again, like, 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 the Electric Wind Godfist is one of the most iconic moves in fighting game history. Like, people, like, people do their first Electric Wind Godfist, it's like a rite of passage in the second. Like, oh my god, this is such a horrible take. My goodness me, dude. You need to... Please, just play a fighting game for once in your goddamn life. Play a game that's a Nintendo one. This is stupid. Right now, like I said, it's hard to say, but based on what I've seen, it doesn't look that unique. He's a fighting character, and once again, he has a devil mechanic, which allows him to become super powerful, I guess, when he takes more damage. Once again, we- It's not just more powerful, that's like a moveset change, like, just based on what you see in here. I mean, even if it isn't, like, like, Devil Kazuya, like, this is like a part- this is their lore here. This is just like, like, that's- like, a transformation is unique. Combat mechanics are inherently unique because they all take different approaches. Combat mechanics are a massive, a massive thing you could just do so much with. Like Sephiroth gains extra jobs, for example. I, uh, like, like Terry get like Terry, he gets desperation moves, which is literally like a homage to his game. Like I don't like you don't transform with the with the Mishimas, I don't think I, I don't play Tekken much, but like, I, I'm aware of the series and appreciate it a lot. Love watching Tekken, by the way. Bless Arana. Uh, but like, like it's. It just seems very odd. Like, I this is a of reference to the rage mechanic, which is already in Tekken, so you can't really... Like... Like, in terms of, like, if this transformation is, the th is like, a thing where you take more damage and stuff, like, while it isn't a Tekken thing inherently, it's, um... Considering how, like, they are different characters and stuff like that, I think you may get a different reset. But if it isn't, it's just a more powerful thing. It's still a good approach to take, because it's so that rage is, a, is already a mechanic in Tekken. It's just a thing where, you, like, if you put on red HP, you get more damage output. Um... But here it's like, you can't just do that with him because it's already there. So you have to take a different approach, don't you? It's a, a, again, like just very stupid. We've seen this mechanic over and over and over again, and it's nothing really that special by this point. Oh, we just, we just got rage. There we go. <laughs> uh, I didn't see that in the trailer. But again, it's not something you've seen over and over again. It's just a thing that the DLC characters do as a general theme to make them more unique and exciting to, to buyers. Just keep in mind, like DLC characters that you have to sell them. And if it's just another character, I don't think people would be very interested. Like, that's why Byleth, like, I presume, isn't that popular. Why Banjo is like, seen as mundane. Like, part of the reason why Banjo is seen that way is because he doesn't have the mechanics like the other ones. It's not a problem. It's just a, it's just a, a thing they do to sell the character and also flesh them out more. Because if you buy a single DLC character, you want that thing, like, like, like... Because keep in mind, not everyone's buying all the DLC. Not everyone's buying the season passes, even. Some people will just buy a single character because, like, oh, yeah, I want this character for years. I'm, 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 let's, let's buy them. And so you want the character to be distinguished from the roster, wouldn't you? That's part of a selling point. So every character has a unique selling point. These, and this is just a very easy one to do. Well, not necessarily easy, because depending on how you implement it, but like, again, like it's just something that you have to do. And fan reception, once again... I, should have, I, don't think I want, another thing I want to bring up, uh, actually, while I do this, 
is that comeback mechanics are very good for the DLC because if because the thing is like part of Smash is obviously a, it's obviously a fighting game so you know if you if you uh, again I've also will, I will go on some points I do I do think it just talks about that point parts I've, I've remember my friends saying it because I've Discord chats up and people just talk about that um, but um, in regards in regards to like comeback mechanics. It's very good to put them on DLC characters because naturally, if you're losing, the comeback mechanic will help you. So it helps make the game easier for you overall. Correct? Yeah. So the comeback mechanics uh, just help sell DLC even more in that respect because you have more chance of winning with comeback mechanics inherently. It does give you so it does give you a crutch to get to, to go on to reduce the skill gap and stuff like that. Naturally, in high level play, it it, it matters less because because uh, they are very well balanced. Like comeback mechanics in this game are astoundingly well balanced. So it just it just it just works here. So for low level, it helps them a lot. It helps them win more. Uh, while in high level, it's still well balanced enough to the point where it's not overwhelming, except for the, like a few specific characters. Like for example, Terry's comeback is very very stupid. <laughs> like sometimes he can just touch you and you die from like a, a Buster Wolf confirm. It's just like wow, this character is, this character is hilarious. I love Terry. Love him. <laughs> very happy to co made with K Rool. Again, people were just kind of mixed with the character. They didn't really, you know, they really didn't see many people asking for this character in the very beginning. I mean, most people were asking for Hihachi. That's why I didn't see people asking for Kazuya. Because Hihachi is the most recognizable Tekken character. They're just not adding him to the game because, well, there's voice lines. Are difficult. Uh, uh, you, can't, you can't record voice lines. Like, I, like I, don't think, I don't think they would want to reuse voice lines for the Tekken series. Because, like, it, they wouldn't translate well to Smash. I mean... I will say though, like um, you do see Hihachi here as a background character, so you start like that kind of homage there. Um, but again, like this is just a very odd way to look at things when Hihachi was the way one people wanted, but adding him would have been very would have been very difficult because obviously the voice actor stuff. So it's just not very good take at all. Please don't please just uh, understand the history here. The context is very important. Uh, and even though, like, some people may have wanted Jin, like, Jin and Kazuya are roughly equal in popularity, so... But I do think Kazuya beats it out, because I think he's been a few more crossover titles, I'm not entirely sure. And lots of people thought once Hayachi actually became Mii Fighters, I think twice, this was never gonna happen, and apparently, it is. Like, this is, uh... What? <laughs> like... Me, like, like he seems to be going in with the pretension with the pretense that me and costumes deconfirm characters, but this has been such a thoroughly debunked thing ever. Like, so here's the thing: like, if you want to know the rules for uh, for what characters get into Smash, just look at the official statements from from Sakurai and the ones in the Smash Fight Bros. Fighter ballot. The only the only officially confirmed requirement is that the character has to be from a video game. You can have all these little fan theories you want that have all been thoroughly debunked, like, oh, Spheros Decoflow characters, Pyro comes in, oh, okay. Yeah, Sister Trophies Decoflow characters, okay. I mean, the Sister Trophies are probably, like, the one, the one, the one that's, like, most, most like, quote-unquote, confirmed, but, like, again, it's no official statement. The only statements are, this character has to be for a fighting game. Sakurai is, in fact, I think he's Decoflow, like, half the fan theories on his own. It's such a stupid thing to say, like, uh, to say, like... Obviously, he didn't directly state it, but like he did say, "Oh yeah, me costumes would never happen." It's a, it's something that is, it's something that fans have repeated to, and it, it does create an echo chamber where they think that that state is true, um, rather than actual official statements that have stated, "Hey, this is this this is a rule." There are no rules, and all, again, like it also keep on it's Nintendo picking them here, so that's enough that to consider as well. Which again, it's another reason why I think Kazuya got in because like Nintendo didn't want to cross voice actor controversies in Japan because. Voice actor controversies in Japan, they are massive. They're like, very big. <laughs> Bullshit. Bullshit. There was reception, this character's very hype, and he's definitely gonna be unique because it's a Tekken character in Smash. You have not played Tekken ever. <laughs> this dude does not play fighting games, I'm sorry. Well, it's not even using the, he's not even using the artwork from the website, come on, dude. Now, based around those four category criteria... Oh, man, he's like, oh, man, he went there. He went there. Wait, so he actually ranks them? So this is just even more gamed against Midman. Wow. Yeah, I feel like a good DLC character is a character that brings those categories together and has about three out of the four attributes, or even four out of the four attributes. And that's how I came up with my top four best DLC characters. A character that not only is iconic and has... 
this is so American. I'm sorry, like, I don't, I don't like Bash Wheels nationalities, but, like, unless they're American. <laughs> but, like, like, this is a very, very, very American take. Great fan reception. Actually, actually, hold on, it's not, actually, wait, hold on. Hero is second, so it's not an American take. Uh, Americans don't th think Hero doesn't exist. But it has a great, unique moveset and a legacy behind it. That's why... Again, like, legacy is a very flawed thing to use when you when you consider, like, like it ex inherently excludes newer characters. And, and like, that will inherently cause, um, cause like, one-hit wonder franchises to be less to be less valued because their legacy is um, limited to a single game, which puts them at a massive disadvantage to characters like, to characters like Banjo. This is not a very uh, good idea to you, a good idea. Especially considering that, like, for example, like, that would exclude Joker on the basis of him being, of, 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 like, if he's using that stupid, that stupid, oh yeah, there's only two games thing, but despite being a franchise that will, uh, well, it changes it, protects every, every game. But, I'll be, like, if we, like, with respect to that point, um, you could also argue that, that, uh, franchises that will, um, reset the protagonist every game are, 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 are it's justified to put them that way because, may, because maybe the characters have less impact because, like, single game thing. But even then, like, I think it disregards the series as a whole in that regard. But yeah, with one hit wonders and stuff, that's sort of a whole other conversation entirely. So, so those two groups of franchises, because uh, I think I actually like meld the two things together here because we're trade of thoughts. But um, you have those two those two areas, and they, those are going to be inherently disregarded in his metric, which I think is very very dangerous and flawed. Steve is number one, and Hero is number two, with four out of the four categories filled, and Banjo and Sephiroth with three out of the four filled. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, so you're telling me that every other character in the game is trash because they don't have a three out of four or four out of four criteria? Not necessarily, but there are about five characters that just don't even fit hardly any, if not just one category. Terry fits basically all of them if you're not, if you're not stupid and ignorant. Kazuya as well. Again, like, 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 Kazuya's from, like, the one franchise that competes with Smash in terms of fighting games. That's insane. Like, that, that inherently is insane. And, like, like, again, like, Min Min is just, Min Min uh, and Byleth are being, like, very unfairly judged here because of, the, because of, like, limitations that like, he put in himself. Um, like, oh, hell, I can even argue that the, argue, argue, um, Pyro and Mithra because like, he just disregarded the, the history behind, um, the Cedar Blade Chronicles. Which he, she then pivoted on, on in regards to like the legacy thing, so uh, perhaps in the rest of the series. It's just very, very odd the way he's like ranking these characters. So, uh, uh, like, it's very unfair uh, based on his metric. If he's going to be unbiased in this, I would suggest to like rethink your metric, ver like very deeply, especially in regards to the fan reception stuff. And that's like, like, like I understand. Like I understand it is very difficult to like. Like gauge reception as I put as I put out before, but like he does, he does very short sighted. The legacy thing is very poorly thought out. Those are my two biggest criticisms of this video. He doesn't seem to understand that, especially considering that he doesn't even do any research on Terry or Kazuya because he doesn't play fighting games. Concerning five characters out of the total ten can be seen as kind of not that important, and lots of people don't really care about any of those characters. And how do you gauge this? How do you gauge the people who care? Do you do it on your personal experience, or do you do it on the YouTube views? Like, like if you do it on YouTube view views, like, like, Kazuya's trailer had a massive breakout. If you do, like, like, what the fuck are you on about? Like, like, it's so bizarre. Like, how do you gauge who cares? How do you gauge any of this? It's so, so, like, like, Smash is a game that sells, like, millions of copies the community is astoundingly large with many cliques from different nationalities the games they're from have their own communities as well all with their own cliques and different and different areas this is such a difficult thing to gauge and he and i i just find it hard to believe that he could be this judge of that it's a very like you're not you're not the center of the universe you are not an all-knowing god you cannot gauge this in a video. It's it's astoundingly difficult. You could obviously go, oh, oh, I don't see this as good, which is what you're actually saying. You're saying that from your own personal experience, which I can understand. But the way he's framing it is as if is as if every nope, nobody cares at all. It's very very dumb. This isn't a problem. This is your own opinion. Like I, I guess you can say, oh, yeah, this is a problem with my opinion. Yes, 
like this like if it's an opinion article you want to frame it as an opinion article not with this so-called factual conjecture that you that, this factual thing you're doing where it's merely conjecture you frame it as a fact with like no this is not the case hardly anybody ever plays them especially when i go online or just play casually with friends I see Pirate and Mithra a lot, and it's not that they're new, they're just, they're just a very sustained popularity. I also see Terry quite a lot online as well, uh, which is quite funny. Uh, my life as well. I don't see Min, Min much though. Like, again, this is my own personal experience, but like, but there is a usage stats website for, uh, for online stuff, um, which is based on uh, Smash.GG usage, and Terry has quite high usage there as well. Uh, in fact, there's a guy called OG Mustaine who competes in like every tournament, so you see it, like, which may actually inflate the usage stats, that guy is really cool. But um, but yeah, he's uh, also I also he is Mexican, which just further reinforces it, I guess. Um, yeah, stupid point, very stupid point. People just don't care about these characters. No, you are wrong. The fat controller left. You are wrong. Once again, Kazuya could definitely change once he releases, but I'm just saying for now. We also another thing I should mention, like with Terry and Kazuya, if you want to explain the low usage, it may also be that the that the skill barrier is quite high. Because you have, because these those two like like uh, Kazuya is a Tekken character in Smash, which I already think is going to be a ridiculously complicated and difficult to access. I will say I don't think he's going to have a very high user base just on that. I think it'll just be like Tekken fans who play the character. Um, I like set with Terry. Um, you see a lot of like Ryu players also play Terry because Ryu players and Ken players they are fighting game junkies. They will play all of them. In fact, it's very common to see Ryu, Ken, and Terry players. All play, all play all the characters. It's, quite, it's a very common thing in the community. I'm saying it's someone who actually like owned the Terry Discord for one point in Smash Courts. Um, before I was unceremoniously dismissed. <laughs> um, but yes, like, it's very common to see them play all the characters. So there is that to consider as well. I also sit and hear people complain about too many sword fighters, and now people are trying to say that there's too many fighting game characters coming. Whoever says that is a fucking idiot. Like, four fighters game characters isn't enough. That, that's that's my opinion. Like, like come on, add a virtual fighter character next. Come on. Come on, you can do it, Sakurai. Add some more. I, I, I want my FGC to representation. Add, add, add fucking Shanko from Darkstalkers. Come on, I, I, want, I want her. I want my, my original main. <laughs> I want my first fighting game character I played in this game. Come on, you can do it. You can do it, Sakurai. Okay, so like... I'll, I, okay, I'll, let's let's state a case for fighting game characters in Smash because like I, I like I think there's not enough. So Smash is a fighting game. Whoever says otherwise is stupid and being and like because they they forget that platform fighter is an entire genre. Like if you say that if you say that Smash isn't a fighting game, you're saying that Rivals of Ether isn't a fighting game. You're saying that Brawl Out isn't a fighting game, and those are just two of many. Like. Platform like Smash spawned the entire genre of platform fighters. In fact, like PlayStation All Stars is also it's also a game that exists. It's just a game that exists though. That's the thing. It's not very good. <laughs> like, isn't Kratos like really broken though? But, but yeah, I think that the fighting game mechanics that they that they employ it that they employ like traditional fighting mechanics with uh with uh te with like a uh, Street Fighter stuff. I think the way they apply them is incredible, and I want to see more of it because the way they the way they do it is very intricate. Like for example, like when they added Terry, they put in render cancelling. They put in uh oh, which skill is also known as chain cancelling by the way, it's a Street Fighter 2 tech. They also added uh charge partitioning, a Street Fighter 3 tech for Terry. They specifically added it into its into the char rise tackle move. Um they they added they've added even more than that. Like, like it's such a, a interesting interesting mechanic. It's so 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 cool. Um yeah, like that. Like th that stuff is just fantastic, and I want to see what they. I, I can't wait to see what they do with with Kazuya because, like, in his trailer, he seemed he seemed to do a Korean backdash, and also has like a weird thing he did. For, you know, where, like he was going under Hadouken. I'm lo I can't wait to see more of this when he comes out. I'm I'm gonna like I've got to sit down with this character for hours, I think, because I just want to see what they do with him. And this is why I want to see more fighting game characters in Smash because they they are so cool competitively. It's such a such a fun thing. But anyway, so in terms of and so outside of the, the technique stuff though, because I know that not everyone's interested in tech, I think that it's a very important as a history thing as well. Because a lot of people who play Smash don't play traditional fighters. Reflecting in this video, this guy does not play them. Um, you can tell just by how he reacted to Terry and how he reacted to to, to Kazuya, and probably like Ken as well. He doesn't uh, obviously he's not in this video, but I can't wait. I can't imagine how he reacted to Ken based on this. Like, oh, it's just a worthless clone. No, shut the fuck up. Get out of here. <laughs>
<laughs> nah, 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 nah. Um, but yeah, like, like, considering Smash is a fighting game and it was inspired by fighting games, it was inspired for King of Fighters, I believe that's, that it justifies more inclusion. Because just, just as a whole, it's just so much you could do with this with this stuff. Like, it's Virtual Fighter, um, Dark Stalkers. Dark Stalkers need to rep, by the way. Like, easily what easily like the like like, like it was more of the traditional fighters that could, that was like a, a lasted longer than melee in a, in, in like Evo. It, it lived longer than melee. Well, wait, no, that's not right. It was in a different. Uh, no, sorry, I'm, I'm not. That was that was very stupid of me. Um, it's something else. Like, it lasted about as long. Like, I think it lasted like fourteen years at Evo, which at the time was more than melee because it because it existed beforehand. I think it was like I think like I think it was like two three years beforehand. It, um, and so, it, but that was like back in like as of like twenty seventeen. Um, I, I still haven't seen it side events. It's very poorly explained point, but I think you get the idea. Please tell me you get the idea. Please please give me validation in the comments. Um, but uh, yeah, like there's so much you can do with this. So much. There's so many fighting games out there. Hell, a like, Guilty Gear rep would be the most amazing thing. Add fucking Soul Bad Guy. Add Soul Bad Guy. Give these people a taste of what of what fighting game characters can really do. Because Guilty, actually no, just add Jacko. Add Jacko, and make everyone upset. That'll be really funny. Please add Jacko Valentine from Guilty Gear and Zerd Revelator. Thank you, thank you, Sakurai. Um. Like, there's so, there's so much. Oh yeah, Soul Calibur, you can add Nightmare! Come on, give us Nightmare. That'd be, that'd be cool. But again, like, like there's, there's just so many fighting games out there. And given Smash is a fighting game, I think it's more justified to add fighting game with third party characters. Just like, just in general. I think it's just a fantastic idea. And if this is the direction Smash is taking, I'm all for it. Because uh, like, I want more, more Smash players to play fighting games because there's so much you can learn from fighting games that you can apply to Smash. Like some people say, it's untranslatable. I'd say it's a one-way street. If you apply Smash fundamentals to fighting games, you'll often get hurt. But if you apply fighting game fundamentals to Smash, you often like get a much better neutral. Um, in my experience, a lot of like Ryu, Ken, Terry players, they all have astoundingly good neutrals, like astoundingly good, because they apply because they 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 were brought up with fight with traditional fighters and thus applied those fundamentals to, to Smash. Which, which, you could, which gives you a massive head start, by the way. If you're learning Smash from a very fighting fight game, applying FGC neutral fundamental stuff would get would get you very far very quickly. So I think I think encouraging Smash players to play fighting games is just very nice, and I think it'd be nice to to like bridge the gap between the the FGC and Smash even more. Which is something I've noticed with uh, uh, with like people who, who reacted to to Kassia. a lot of a lot of like my tech and friends were like, "Hey, maybe you'll try Smash now." Yeah. Just in general, I think there's a lot you can do here. And, uh, and there's definitely a massive case for adding more. Uh, who, I remember one guy on Smog on this on this thread. Uh, they said like, like FGC characters watered down the gameplay. And I was just like, fuck off, no. Like, like no disrespect to the person, but like, it was just a, it just felt very, very stupid. But then again, I think that person was a more casual player, and I can understand why they would see that like that, that way. Especially because like, if you're a casual player who plays only random, like, and you get a fighting game character, you just kind of panic. <laughs> yeah, you just kind of sit there and you're like, oh, huh. What do I do with this character? Which I understand. Uh, which is why, if, which, which, hell, you can even use it as a case for not adding more. Because of, it, of the random, of, the, of how, it do, how it may hurt people who only play random. Yeah, I see lots of different takes on this and lots of people defending and kind of reacting to it. But here's what I have to say about it. Yes, I do think there are a lot of sword fighters in this game. And yes, there are starting to become a lot more fighting game characters in this game. They've added two! Come on! That is so unfair! They've added two FGC characters in the DLC. And they added Ken in, 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 as an Echo Fighter. And like, if you consider Echo Fighters to not take slots, because like, obviously they let you stack them, because like, I love how people are so, in, a lot of sort of people are so insecure about, about, about clothes that they actually might let you stack them just so you don't have to look at them. <laughs> Even then, the Echo Fire thing is kind of bull bullshit as well. There's some weird, there's some really weird ones where like, it see, they seem like they should be Echo Fires, but they're not, like Dr. Mario. Uh, but like, in this regard, like, holy shit, dude, what are you on about? Like, a lot more? Like, of course there'll be a lot more. You only had one beforehand. You only had Ryu as DLC in Smash 4. Like, this is an entire character archetype that should absolutely be expanded more. 
Three more is great. Please add more. There's it's so much you can do with this with this with this with archetype. To discredit it solely because like they've added three with ultimate, that's so dumb. Like yeah, there's a lot of sword fighters. But, like how's that like relevant here? Oh, actually wait, no, 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 no. It's all about something else. Uh, sorry, sorry, I, I basically screwed that part. But there's a lot of sword fighters. Though, I'll definitely say that. <laughs> they keep adding them to the DLC, which I think is hilarious. I just like seeing Smashers more over that at this point because they just like they get so angry about sword fighters, especially when you play them. As you say, it's like I remember one of my friends who play Sephiroth. They, they get like those complaints all the time. It's just like it's just great. I know a lot of people have been saying, "Oh man, fighting characters coming to a fighting game." But if you think back, this isn't a fighting game. Sakurai himself said he sees this game as a party game. Not a That's an outdated take. Sakurai's actually turned around in that regard. Sakurai has referred to Ultimate as a fighting game for quite a while now. Uh, Nintendo has also supported the esports scene, although they don't do it anymore. But like, they do still like consider like, do like interact with the scene to some degree, and they do uh, they have supported it as an esports in the past. While they did absolutely fucking bastardize it as an esports, they still did. Uh, they still have interacted with the scene a bit, which which further shows that they do consider it to be a competitive fighting game. Um, I uh, hell hell Reggie even once commented on the e melee scene using UCF, uh, which like they do support melee as a fighting game. Which is strictly an esport now. Like, you have to acknowledge that. It is strictly an esports game. So, Smash is a fighter game by all metrics. It qualifies. It is, it is a platform fighter. That is a game genre. And, and like, if you believe this is still a party game, this is a very stupid way to look at it. And also, keep in mind, Smash has its roots in King of Fighters. King of Fighters mechanics were put into the original Super Smash Bros. Short hops are a King of Fighters mechanic. Rolls are from Fatal Fury and King of Fighters. Spot dodges even. I like it's where swords plane switching it to, to some degree. There is so much from these two of those two games that was put into Smash. In fact, hell, Mario was sort was vaguely designed at least after Ryu. Where, uh, because you could see the similarity in the movesets. Like, how the hell can you go as far as to call this game? So, uh, anything other than a fighting game. It's just a platform fighter, which is which is its own thing. In fact, did you know there's arena fighters in these games? Like like Soul Calibur and some of the Dragon Ball Z games? Arena fighters are a thing. Fighting games come in under all manner of forms. This is a very, this is such a common, stupid take. Smash is a fighting game, but it's also a party game. It has many different interpretations, and that's what makes the game fantastic. It, you can play it in so many ways, there are so many rule sets you could do. Like, if you want to play like, like a traditional fighter, which I actually done with a few friends, I, I find it very fun, you could just like, you do stamina, make it like, her best, like, like add like two stocks and stuff, like, that sort of thing. You can play it in so many ways, and that's what makes it fantastic. But by all accounts, it is a fighting game that can be played in the manner of a party game. That's how Smash works. It's such... It's so dumb, so dumb. Not a competitive fighting game at all. And if you're disagreeing with me, you're disagreeing with Sakurai, because he definitely- Ha <laughs> ha He said changes mind on that. And also, also, another thing I should say. On the blurb of Smash Ultimate, they do call it a fighting game as well. And on most game review websites, it's regarded as a fighting game. You can look at the genres. You're like, like, yes, I'm disagreeing with the old Sakurai take that has since changed. It's advertising, it's everything, is fighting game. You are, like, you are going with a very old take. He has stated this multiple, multiple times, that this is a party game in his eyes. So, when we're getting all these actual hardcore fighting characters from fighting games, lots of people aren't resonating with them because they like the cartoonish characters that we come to love from Nintendo. The characters that are just stupid and make no sense. God, the original Nintendo... There's a lot of fighting game characters that make no sense at all. Like, you have Seth from Street Fighter, you have like the entire Darkstalkers roster. Many Street Fighter characters are, are, are just like, just look weird. Hell, like, like, Kazuya has the devil form, you have Devil Jin, you have a fucking panda in Tekken. You have a panda! Like, really, like, like, come on, like, King of Fighters has fucking. That's a fucking dinosaur type like costume guy, which is actually Tzok, but like you get the idea. Now, like hell, Extreme Fighters twelve, like twelve and Necro, dude, like woof. 
There are many cartoony fighters that, that make no sense in fighting games. Like, this is, this is such a common stereotype, I don't get it. Hell, like, Skullgirls is just anime. <laughs> like, Blaze Blue is just anime. <laughs> well, anime fighters are another genre, by the way. That's another thing I forgot to mention. Like, like it may not resonate with every- like, like, you're saying it's just not resonate with people. I could say the same about, like, half the characters you like. Banjo doesn't resonate with the Japanese audience at all, because it's sold like shit over there. Not many people have memories of it. Like, nostalgia characters are inherently very limited in scope. As I mentioned before, Banjo's target audience is Westerners who are over the age of 20. That's roughly what the target audience is going to be. Like, like this is just, this is just, like, basic business. Like, of course they're not going to, of course fighting and characters aren't going to resonate with everybody, because, again, like, it's, there's a lot of stereotypes around the fighting game franchises, which is why we need more, because it breaks the stereotypes. It causes people to try them out. Like, expand their horizons, bring uh, learn new things they could bring to, back to Smash and be like, hey, I could do this from this game. I, 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 I could do this. This is cool. I love that part of Smash. It's all the learning and stuff. It's fun. This is a celebration of gaming history. That's how Sakurai has called it recently, in fact. He's referred to Smash as no longer just a game. That's about, that's about like, Nintendo's history. It's gaming history as a whole. And that is beautiful. That is a beautiful thing for a game to get big enough to do that. So, by all means, add more fighting game characters. Because this is a very underrepresented genre. Hell, I want shooter characters as well. Add, add Master Chief from Halo. That's another one we need. We need shooter characters. We need more adult characters, I think. Also, add a Resident Evil rep, by the way. Add Nemesis T-Type. <laughs> oh yeah, that'd be so cool. Hey, oh, Ace Attorney, let's get some visual novels in here. Like, I'm, I, I, don't give, I don't give a fuck. 64 had a roster of Jigglypuff, Kirby, and of course, Ness, a little boy with a baseball bat. So those are the characters that we grew up with and learned to love. So when we get all these realism characters, it's kind of hard to love them the same way. Well, when, you, when your game is a, is a celebration of, of gaming history, you're going to have characters of different art styles. That's just a natural thing. Like, you know, Bayonetta is, like, is kind of, re is sort of realistic. Like, just, like, fighting game characters aren't inherently realistic. It's just that you happen to get three of them, in the addition to Ryu, that are human. Humans are, believe it or not, and this may shock you, the most common demographic for protagonists in gaming. So when you have a celebration of gaming history, you will have human characters that often look quite realistic. Because it's not, it's not, it's not like Sakurai and Nintendo's fault that you only play cartoony games growing up. Smash is evolving. Ultimate has shown a massive, a massive shift in how they represent games because their new target is not Nintendo history, but gaming history. That's the disconnect you're experiencing, and, may, and possibly others. This is normal. This is very, very normal. And I understand, but also, it's not like, you, know, you shouldn't be like prejudicing characters just because they look different. It's very weird. That's why lots of people came so together with Banjo and Kazooie in a character like Steve because they're just crazy and out of the blue in a character that just feels right in Smash. It wasn't a complete coincidence why those two characters had the highest view counts by a mile. Maybe because the characters trailers are, are from 2019 and 2020, that may, that may just be the answer my friend. May just be the answer you're looking for, I don't know man, I don't know. And I think the same things could happen with future characters. I think not only do they just need to be cartoon characters or something like that, but the legacy behind them also holds a lot of weight. When lots of people are- The legacy behind the fighting game characters um, is quite large actually. If you actually played the games and actually did your research on them, you may also understand it yourself, but you didn't. Are clamoring and begging for a character for years and years and years and years and years, it means a lot when that character finally does happen. Yes, we also wanted more FGC representation in Smash after Ryu came out. That's something that a lot of people did clamor for, you just didn't see it because you're not in the fighting game community. Now does everybody's character need to be answered just because they've been begging? No, but you can definitely tell which characters are going to get a reaction and which characters aren't. And I think that's where the disconnect is with Nintendo. Nintendo doesn't really quite understand what people really want as a DLC character, and they're clearly not listening. Was no, you're the one who's not listening. That's the problem here. Um, Nintendo perfectly understands because, like, they're a massive billion-dollar company 
that does a lot of market research before adding something. That's just like how it works here. And also, the, well, there probably is money going around as well. I wouldn't be surprised if SNK paid to have Terry in, but at the same time, Sakurai also wanted them, so maybe that's another thing. But if you like for Kazuya, for example, like actually another thing I don't know, Kazuya. One of the reasons why Kazuya got in, in my opinion, this is obviously my own theory, but I believe Kazuya got in because he was very close at hand as a third-party rep. Because Bandai Namco produces Tekken. Bandai Namco also just so happens to work on Smash. So I think it could also be considered a reward for Bandai's efforts that Kazuya got in Smash. I think it's I think that's actually quite a beautiful thing in my mind, actually. It's no longer like it's not just being paid anymore. There's a like, legitimate like work like uh, work but workplace friendship there. But just but like in general, like they do a massive amount of market research before adding a character. That's like basic things in planning. You have to consider notability and everything. You have to consider the 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 groups of people they want to bring to Smash as well. It's not just the community that they're answering to. They're answering to also different different demographics that aren't into Smash either because they want to bring more people into the community to, to go, hey, look at this. We have your character from this game in here now. Why don't you buy our game and buy our DLC as well? You can play this character. You can play this character and then get them into community and stuff. There's there's so many more angles. It's not just it's not just about you. It's about everybody. You know, like this is not another beautiful thing about Smash. It's such a, a wonderful thing. And it's, it's really hurts. It's kind of almost hurtful to see like this kind of thing disparage like that. Smash is a beautiful game. Kazuya a terrible character that Nintendo should have never gone with? No, but not when there's two characters left of the past and during an E3 reveal. It just... It's fantastic for it to be an E3 reveal, especially when Capcom was, was, was announcing that Pro Tools stuff. I think, I think it was a fantastic timing, actually. As an E3 reveal, Kazuya is amazing, because like again, like Tekken is just as big as Smash. It's you really are underestimating just how big of a deal Kazuya being a Smash is. Again, the, the again the trailer has been out for, for just a, a little while. And it's got more views than Byleth and the other ones. You yourself looked at that metric. That's a massive amount of views it's so early on. It's not just because it's E3 either, because they did say Kazuya. Like I'm like, come on, man. It's such a this is so misleading just didn't feel right. Now once again, I'm not hating on- It didn't feel right for you, not everyone else. A lot of people like this, come on. Anyone's character, and if you love one of these characters that I put in the kind of not so good category, that's perfectly fine. You're allowed to love these characters, that's awesome. I've been there before with characters that many people didn't like. I loved Little Mac when he released and almost no one liked him or cared about him, and I still love Little Mac as much today, so I completely understand. But when we look at DLC that we're actually paying extra for, for two additional packs, kind of expect some of these characters to fill more of these categories. Now I know a lot of you guys are going to come at me as- Yes, you are not the target audience, so don't buy it. That's that's just how it works, my friend. That's how the market acts and operates. It's not you can be disappointed, but like that you know, like that's like you know, that's that's your prerogative, but like come on. You know, like is it pejorative? I think it's pejorative. I don't think I pronounced that right. And say, okay, okay, Mr. Hotshot, what are your characters that you would want in a third pack? Well, I'll tell you. Well, my first character will be Master Chief or Doom Guy. Based. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. This guy's got this guy's got me. He's got me. I know I talked about characters that are more cartoonish and feel like a Nintendo character, but we really don't have anybody in the game that really messes with weaponry or guns that much besides Snake. So this would definitely be a unique character for sure. And not only that, I think the whole world would actually lose their mind if any of these characters got revealed. Here's the thing, um, Tekken is about as big as Halo. I just want to point it out, like, based on what you're saying here, like, like just, just a little, you may want to, like, check the sales there. Oh. <laughs> I don't know which one, Master Chief or Doom Guy, you guys can decide, but they're both very unique and both very alike that they both can fill that slot. They are not alike! Have you played these games? They are very different. Halo is Halo's more funny, operates very differently. Like, ooh, my, my boy. Ooh, ooh. Like, Doom is a momentum based shooter. Very, it's, uh, you have, you know, you're fighting demons and shit. Like, Halo has a lot more, like, spacey kind of guns, like the Needler. So, like, like the, these two characters are very different. Just because they're both shooter characters doesn't mean they're alike. 
In fact, adding both would probably be one of the most insane things to me. Those, they both need to be in Smash. Also, by the way, with regards to like, the Kazuya point about it only being two DLC packs left, that's irrelevant. Um, like, that's like saying oh, if by left was the third rep or something like that, I'd be like, oh, that's that's bad because we only have two reps left. What, what do you want about? What do you want? Do you want the characters to be revealed first? Do you want to be revealed later? Come on, make up your mind. Hell, even if Kazuya was revealed first, you'd say, oh yeah, Terry wasn't long revealed though. Like, just, just say you don't want the character. Number two, I'm actually going to have Crash Bandicoot. There's no reason whatsoever Crash isn't in this game right now. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I actually agree. Yeah. Yeah, Crash should be in. Like, Crash and Banjo are probably like, well, like characters who should have been in the Smash 4 DLC in my opinion, but like, that's a whole other story. He was a video game icon back in the day and actually just made a return. He was there with Mario, Sonic, and them. Hold on. Um, he didn't just make a return, he's been around all the time. It's just like he didn't have any, like, mainline platformers. It's not a return, he's just being around, he just didn't have any mainline games. Like, he was, I think he was in PlayStation All-Stars, I'm not sure. I forgot. And he definitely belongs in Smash, and even looks like a character that just belongs in Smash Brothers. Crash Bandicoot needs to be there, and is actually one of the only characters I think left that if Nintendo doesn't get, it would just be a letdown for sure and a missed opportunity. Coming in at number three, I'm gonna have Shantae. We really don't have a character to represent the indie world. Huh? Did he get sad as a me costume? And Steve is an indie character. Wait, wait, hold on! Steve is the indie character. Just because he went mainstream doesn't mean he isn't still an indie character. He began as an indie. What are you on about? Huh? And also, like, is not Shantae like completely unknown, like, like outside of America? Like, I, I believe in Europe, this character is very popular at all. I, I've, I've been, I've, I've had the Shantae debate with people in like Facebook groups before. Um, like back, this was back when I was a bit of an idiot though, so, um, but Shantae is, like, it, like, it, that's a steep drop from Steve, in terms of, like, indie notability. Like, I mean, I guess, I guess that's, like, I guess that's, like, comparing, like, uh, like, 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 Elon Musk to a random guy on the street, though. Like, considering how much, how different this is. Not to say that Shantae isn't, isn't all popular at all, I know Shantae is a very widely requested character, and, like, a character that's, like, quite notable in, like, in, like, Western circles, I understand that, but, like, at the same time, it's a very difficult one to, to think about. I know, like, I definitely, I definitely wouldn't mind Shanti being in. I think Shanti would be a very interesting character, but also, like, I can't just, like, like, if I, like, programming Shanti sounds like a nightmare for it from a DLC perspective, because you have to, like, do all those transformations and stuff. Lots of different models. Very interesting, very interesting choice, but, like, at the same time, like, I do think it's, like, I, I like, again, like, it's just stupid to say that we don't have a character to represent indies when we just got Steve. One character would be great enough to represent the indie world. We got Steve. We have our one character. Like, like, Steve being, Steve being owned by Microsoft now does not mean that he isn't an indie character. He, like, Steve represents how an indie character could go from zero to, all the, to the most iconic video game character of all time. Steve represents that struggle, a thing for indie developers to aspire to. He is the indie rep. Sans is already put down as a me costume. There's been a lot of characters put down as me costumes or assist trophies. And yes, you could say Minecraft Steve, but officially Minecraft is now owned by Microsoft completely and is a whole full studio company. It's not an indie studio anymore. It's not about the studio. In fact, it, like, it's not about the studio, it's about the character. Just because the studio is suddenly mainstream does not change the fact that Steve represents the indie struggle. He represents how that struggle can become something huge. For a game developer standpoint, that is incredible. Steve is the biggest symbol of indie success ever. To disregard that entire history, just because they suddenly got bought by Microsoft, doesn't change shit. That is such a stupid thing to say. Such an ignorant, arrogant thing to say. That's really, that's genuinely like really frustrating. Like very, very frustrating thing to say. Like, just, like, like, come on, like, Shantae isn't gonna fuck you, so why tear down Steve's success for the, for this? Like, why tear down that entire annulled history of this character? A symbol of, like, like how grassroots can become, can become something so big. Just because, just because, just to, just to make an argument for Shantae. Make an argument for Shantae on her own merits as a character of an indie game 
rather than just rather than base it on, on on like Steve not being as big as he actually is, or like Steve just becoming oh yeah he's no longer indie because he got bought by Microsoft. Shut up. That's really that's actually that's generally like really annoying. A lot of people say this about Steve. And I don't I don't get it. I I really don't get it. We need an actual indie studios game rep in the game, and Shante could be it. Now okay, actual indie studio. Yeah, Moyag is Moyag was indie. Like just because it was doesn't mean it doesn't mean like doesn't change anything. I understand that point. I do. I do actually. I do actually vibe with that a bit. It's a fair point. Like, oh yeah, okay. You want an indie studio rep, rather uh, like a like a current indie studio, which I think I think is fine. Like that'd be cool. Like yeah. You know, so then you have those two dynamics. You have the indie, the indie character that's gone that's gone like too big to fail almost in terms of the game in terms of the game industry, and then you have like an actual indie studio. I, I do. I, I but then like so you have the indie character in the industry. So that, that, yeah, okay. But like, even then, like I still think you should make the argument on on Shantae's own merits rather than rather than Steve's changes. That's one thing I don't understand. It's a very flawed argument. Not only would it make fans go crazy, and she also technically has the legacy because Shantae has been around for a very long time and even has a whole game collection pack now. But uh, on that note, Shantae's uh, history is actually quite spotty. Um, Shantae has been around since the Game Boy Color and was uh, and was one of the last games to be released for the platform. In fact. Um, However, Shantae also went off grid for a very long time until the DSi came out, I believe. I may be wrong, but I do believe it was when the DSi came out. So there is a massive gap there, and, the and also the DSi where games, as far, as far as I know, weren't that popular. I may be wrong. You could you could I, you could absolutely crucify me if I'm wrong, but as far as I know, Shantae's legacy didn't start until I believe the 3DS era when Risky's Revenge came out. So there is that to consider. She has been around for a long time and has a long history with Nintendo specifically. But I do believe that it's not quite like the, the, it's not quite the adult history of like a lot of characters that get in Smash. It's not like a very, it's not massive or anything. It's like, it's like, uh, it's like still, it's it's definitely long, but it's like long, but the content isn't there, isn't as big as it looks. Ashante has an incredibly unique moveset, being able to transform into different animals. This could also be seen as a negative from a game development standpoint because. If you're transforming into all these creatures, which Shantae definitely has to do if you want to represent it properly, you'd have to program lots of different models. Modeling a character is by far one of the most frustrating things. Like, I, I would say that, like, like you may see all these, like, 3D models, th things that people do, but the, the work that goes into these models is astonishing. It's very, 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 very difficult. Like, for example, like, if you want to animate and, pr and like, 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 if you want to do, like, Shantae's hair, like, if you want to do all the details, you have to, like, put the strands in on textures and stuff. There's a lot of quirks, like, a lot of tricks you can do, but it's definitely very hard. Um, like, then you have to actually animate that hair, and, like, then you have to animate the models, too. Like, are you going to make the, are you going to make the models less detailed for the sake of this, or are you going to, are you going to, like, go all out? Like, do you want to make them less detailed, and, and thus possibly hurt the visual appeal of Shantae? Like, there's so much there that you have to, that to work with. It's very, very hard. That would just be cool. For my fourth character, I was stuck between Rayman and Dr. Eggman, but I'm gonna have to go with the Doctor, because- This guy's based. Please, God. Please, God, add Eggman. Eggman would be so cool. Like, like this is like the- like, I, like, like, crap, like, this guy's picks are so far really cool, it's just that I don't- it's just like, like, with, with Shantae, I do believe it's like- I don't- I do believe that Shantae's like, like, one of the ones that, like, it's much more difficult than you actually think. Because lots of people have been asking for another Sonic character, and Tails would be cool, but Dr. Eggman would be the best. To have the villain from Sonic the Hedgehog, and it's just weird as one of the only third-party games in Smash that does not have a second character now. Even Final Fantasy VII, just seven, has two characters from that game. I just want to say it's ironic how, like, in the past people were like, oh yeah, oh yeah, like, like, we don't, like, oh, we don't want, want two-way third parties. So they're like, what do you have, like, a thing, a thing? I think when they had Bayonetta, because Spanish is actually like tied to Sega, not just Platinum Games. Like people are like, oh yeah, no, oh yeah, we shouldn't have two two of them. But now it's more like, oh yeah, why don't third parties have suit wraps? That's so funny. I love it. I really love it. But also on that note, if you want to make if I want to make another argument here, does this mean we should have like Antonov from King of Fighters fourteen? Because like SNK doesn't have two reps. Come on, come on, we'll fight your characters. <laughs> In Smash, I definitely think Sonic needs Dr. Eggman. Sonic was the first third-party character added. I want to say, like, that, that argument about, like, that, that thing I mentioned about, like, how, like, like, like people made that pivoted from, like, previously, oh yeah, too many third parties to now more third parties. I'm not saying this to disparage the point about Eggman. I really want Eggman in myself. I, I think he's a really cool character. There's so many things you can do with him. But, like, I just, I just want to point that out. Because it's, it's just really funny when I'm, like, I look at this, these DLC discussions that I've been in since, like, 
like since since like late brawl when people are like debating DLC characters when like we start getting the same day up to channel for Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword on the Wii people are like oh yeah what if, what if brawl got a patch or DLC like we also also went talk to ad adjudicated things like that it needs to happen Dr. Eggman should be there and belongs in the roster and last but not least no I'm not kidding Waluigi I know a bunch of people who don't want Waluigi because of because like the incidents in, his, in, in the character's community but like I, 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 want, I want to point out, like, I don't, I don't think that's an argument. I, like, I think, I think Waluigi is like one of the most fitting ones to represent like the, the Mario spin-off games. I think that's really cool. I would end the pack on something that people have been asking for for years. Something that people have been really wanting, whether it was a meme or not. People really, really, really wanted this character. And just knowing the fan reception would be through the roof, I would definitely put Waluigi in the game to end it as the final character. He is one of the only main Mario characters still not in the game, and it would just make sense. Break him out of the assist trophy and put him in the game. That's what we all want. It would be amazing. To me, I'm just saying there's a clear list of characters that people really want in the game. And this, that list is just getting smaller and smaller, and we're so close to an ultimate, and I mean completely ultimate roster with characters that we would have never expected to be in this game. This roster is already amazing, and if they stopped today, I'd be perfectly fine. And even if this last character isn't anybody super crazy, I'd still be fine. But at the end of the day, there still are better options. There still are better characters, and Nintendo themselves probably even know this, and it's just sad to see them pick some characters that just really aren't getting people excited anymore. I think part of that is the fact that, like, like he already brought out that, that that he probably brought up the point that um that like things that, like the list is getting smaller, uh which means that, uh, like that inherently means people gotta be less excited. Um, it's not that Nintendo isn't picking characters that aren't that aren't getting people that quote unquote aren't getting people excited. It's that this person himself is not getting excited because he only plays Nintendo games. Like I could like I can tell just on his baseless channel on his channel and everything because like, I, I did do a lot of, a few looks and stuff. This guy seems to be strictly a Nintendo fan who grew up in Nintendo games, and it's very common for Nintendo fans. Like I'm not saying this is a problem as a problem or anything. I think it's a very natural thing to happen, but Nintendo fans will nat will naturally be less in tune with games that are like from like the PS4 or the Xbox One, for example, or, or well Xbox Xbox uh, Series X or PS5 now. But you get the idea. When you like, when you grow up with like PS4s with, with, with PlayStation and stuff, like you have very different games that you play because Nintendo is all exclusives. Like this guy's played Nintendo exclusives, so he doesn't have the third party. He doesn't have much knowledge on third parties, and he also doesn't have much knowledge on games that people grew up with on on, in, on the PlayStation front, like, or or the Xbox front, for example. Like for example, like as an example, like if Blinks the Time Sleeper got announced, like you wouldn't know who Blinks is, but Blinks was a a mascot attempt by Microsoft on the Xbox. And that is a character that many people actually grew up with on the Xbox Classic. Um, so again, like that, and hell, like Blinks is a character who would actually fit in quite well with the appearance of Smash. Just, just some food for thought there. People are getting excited. He's just not in the communities where they are getting excited. He's also not acknowledging the fact that DLC isn't just for the community. DLC, and, and as is the case with many games actually, is meant to expand the community. They are not. They're, they're like so naturally. There will be times where the community, like the Smash community, isn't being fed what they want because Nintendo also wants to expand it. So they're not like they're not like hurting the community. They're expanding it. They're not hurting anyone's feelings. They're they're pleasing other people, which is a good thing. It's just it's, 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 like like they, like people don't often think with this perspective on DLC, and I think that's kind of it, it weird. Are they going to end the pack on somebody grand? That's a video for another time. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm sorry if I made you upset about a character. I promise you, I probably end up even liking that character as of today. I'm sorry, I just had to bring up the character for the video. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you did enjoy the concept and the you know ideas put into this video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. It took me a while to get through all this and put this together. Did it really take a while? I find, I find that quite questionable with how he researched the viewership and stuff. I do. I think. I think this video is, if anything, quite rushed, because he didn't do much research on the characters himself. Like, I think if you're gonna make this kind of video where you say, "Oh yeah, this the problem with Smash Ultimate DLC," it that implies that you've done a lot of research to discover if this was actually a problem. I don't think he's actually done that. In fact, I think he's done quite the opposite. I think he's just gone with his own personal opinions and framed them as a problem problem with the actual game itself, 
Well, actually, no, it's not a problem with the game, it's a problem with the person. Um, like, like it's not, I guess it's not a problem with him, but I guess it's just, like, the, the way things have gone from, his, from, from, like, it's not... I guess it's not a problem, it's just that he's ignorant. I think he just doesn't understand, like, how the, the marketing perspective of, the, of DLC, stuff like that. It's just very odd, uh, but at the same time, very natural. Together, but thank you so much for tuning in and like always i'll see you all on the next one see you guys so that was certainly a video um in my opinion this video is not very good <laughs> as you probably would have expected from the way i looked at this a lot of his tapes were very odd and very misinformed um like misinformed is definitely the word for this um I don't. I don't think he's like. I. I. I it's just I, like I think this is just a typical case of a disconnect between Nintendo fans and and the great and the greater gaming community, which makes a lot of sense because Nintendo fans are often very closed off. Like, again, this isn't to disparage them or anything. This is just a natural course of things because the game industry is so large. You cannot. Like, it's almost impossible to know everything about every game. Like, for example, like if a Borderlands or Bioshock character got into Smash. I don't think people would actually recognize recognize them from the Smash community unless they actually like bought a different console. And also, it's also it is quite it is quite um, hard to expect people to play all these games because you have to buy an entire other console, and naturally, not everyone's going to afford that. Most that's why most people will like reserve themselves to a single console as, as out of convenience and co and money. But I do think if you're going to make this type of video, you should do a significant amount of research on, on the characters that got in to understand the trends. I also think that he could have possibly gone over the Smash 4 DLC because that does in, I think that does interlink with how things went here as well. Generally, I just think this is a very um, weird video, um, but uh, but yeah, it's it's about what I expected. I, I didn't expect much, but at least it met my expectations. Anyway, if anyone has like uh, if anyone likes this uh, type of video content from me, I may do this more. Um, it's obviously not very high effort because I'm not doing any editing or anything. It's just me voicing over a video and pausing it on the OBS. So it's nothing. It's nothing like exceptional. It's just like what I have on me. Anyway, thanks. If you if you sat through this almost two hours of me ranting over a video, then by all means, um, <laughs> by all means, like uh, like le like leave your appreciation for it. I guess. Um, <laughs> uh, thanks. <laughs> um, but also, I know that this type of content isn't very high effort. It's not like exceptional, like anything. But I hope that like the um, factual stuff that I go over in these videos is enough to satisfy you. So yeah, I'm just sitting through, and I may do this again. Who knows?